every day is game day. Off my third pound track, you still on that same play. Pop spit it out, but I got family sitting chain links. Oh, you about that action? Tell them boys you about the same thing. Get your popcorn ready, hat made half amazing. Human highlight reel, you gon' see my name in Beijing. Heavy rep I take, you'll see the pain that made me. This gritty on a gridiron, only one of us can stay king. Touchdown every time I touch down, and my defense shut down every time I touch ground. Yeah, lying harder, but I got the eye of an eagle. I put the city on my back, look, I'm gonna ride for my people. And once I take the stage, I'ma start like evil Knievel. I'm built to conquer heights. My mind's a Danny DeVito. And once I get my first ring, I'm manifesting the sequel. Yo, this the IFL. I swear to me, become heroes of in the end. Oh, oh.
first championship in franchise history. Congratulations on the 2021 United Bowl Championship. This is your first year in the IFL. It's only the third year total in four. I'm only singing for the best. Yeah. A winning team that will impress. Yeah. So put the limit to the test. Yeah. I guarantee you won't see less. Yeah. Ooh, we're dropping banners. 
on the face. They couldn't keep up with the pace. Uh, you could remind you just in case. This is something you could never erase. Uh, everybody knows her name. Everybody knows the game. Champions on my pinky ring. Winners only let me hear you sing. Touchdown on it. 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 Uh, you know, just a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work, a lot of work that people don't see. You know, when you're up late at night, so four or five. From the Saga Center, Lowell, it's Massachusetts Pirates football. Tonight, the undefeated Pirates with a mark of 3 0 take on the winless Iowa Barnstormers who come in at 0 and 2. Hello again, everybody. I'm Mick Monaghan. joined by John Vita Perel. Glad you're with us here at the Saga Center tonight. And John, the Pirates, looking to stay perfect not only in the IFL, but also here at home where they have an unblemished record. Yeah, it's been fun to watch the last couple of weeks. They have the bye week last week, so they can rest. But they do have confidence, although we did speak with Rod Miller moments ago. He said, you know what, we still haven't played a complete game. He wants them to be effective in all three phases. Let's tell you about some of the Pirates that we'll keep an eye on here tonight. First off, Thomas Owens, the all-time leading receiver, needs one more touchdown for 75 in the career. He is so explosive, and what a tough cover. He's a veteran who knows how to run routes, and that is very valuable in the IFL. And that one-handed catch, that that was superb, but that was a sports center top 10. One of the best catches you will ever see. Now on the defensive side, you're looking at defensive back Eugene Ford had the play of the game two weeks ago to uh, get the victory against Sioux Falls. Yeah, two passes broken up. And the good thing there, Mick, he was in the right place at the right time. Those are plays that defensive backs on another level make. He was the man on the spot. He made the play. Maybe next time he'll also make the pick. You never know. Pirates against the Iowa Barnstormers tonight. The Pirates looking to stay perfect on the season to go at 4 0. We'll come back with the starting lineups and a lot more, so stay with us here at the Saga Center tonight. We need your trade, so we're paying up to $4,000 over book value. Just go to autofair.com to see how much your vehicle's worth, and we'll give you up to $4,000 over that value. Plus, save even more with Autofair's famously low prices and low financing on every vehicle in stock. It's the big, big buyback. We are getting set for player introductions here tonight. As the Pirates look to continue their mastery at home and go 4-0 overall totally on the season, taking on Iowa, who comes in at 0-2. John, we talked about Alejandro Benefield and the way that he has played this season. He only needs 10 more passing yards to get 4,000 in his career and four more touchdown passes to hit the 50 mark. He has... Uh, gotten rave reviews especially from opposing coaches and consider what he did two weeks ago against Sioux Falls he was almost perfect he was 15 for 16 a clean game that is almost a perfect rating for a quarterback 173 yards five touchdowns when he's on he is on better than anybody in this league his passes have been so precise and he's also bolstered by veteran receivers and you've seen that throughout your tenure broadcasting in the IFL. You speak to any coach, including Rod Miller of Massachusetts. It's all about running routes and getting used to running routes. It's different indoors. It's not the same type of route that you run outdoors. It's much, much tighter conditions. You have to get used to that. The good news for Benefield is he has the receivers to help his cause. 
Well, as we mentioned, the Pirates are very close to taking the field. Again, tonight, we'll keep an eye on Benefield. Also, you had Thomas Owens, who's going after touchdown number 75. The other receiver that jumps out is the leading receiver from a year ago. That is Isaac Zico, closing in on 35 touchdowns. He has 34 career touchdown catches. When you have those two working with another top flight receiver in T.O. Redding, it's really tough for any defense to focus on one guy. That's what makes the Pirates so lethal. Well, that's the thing. When you're coming in as an opposing defensive coordinator, it's pick your poison. Who are you going to stop? The Pirates seem to always have an answer. Games have been tight for the Pirates, but they're scoring at a pretty good pace at 40 points per game. That's ninth in the league. They still want to get that number up. That sounds like a high number. If you're new to indoor football, you might say, boy, what are you talking about? 40 points a game, that's a good number. Not necessarily. You're ninth in the league in that department. So that number needs to rise, but they do have the weapons to choose from that most teams in the league don't. So you see the Pirates at midfield as they salute the crowd here on Cambodian New Year night. Here Happy New Year Bowl. to you, Mick. Well, thank you. A couple months late, but that's okay. Well, Everybody celebrates a New Year at some point, right? Well, it's always a New Year. Yes. So <laughs> the fans now come to their feet as we are set for the singing of our national anthem. Miller react with our national anthem here at the Sanga Center tonight. An impressive rendition, if I don't say so myself. Very nice. Not an easy song to sing. It never is. Never <laughs> is. And, and some are recorded, some are not. I don't believe that was. Nah, totally live, and you got to love that. Well, Jeff Knight is our referee, and he'll be calling the captains out in just a moment. I think a sidebar for tonight is the fact that Jimmy Robinson, the leading rusher in the IFL, is not playing tonight. He's not injured but he is taking the night off and he will probably be missed because he's a ultra weapon. He can do it all, but it happens in this league. Players get weeks off at times and they're going with Tavion Thomas, who's a different type of back, a more of a bowling ball type, more of a bruising running back. Uh, had a very, very good college career at the University of Utah, but that's a different complexion to this offense tonight for the Pirates. Absolutely, Tavion Thomas. We'll get the start tonight. There's Eugene Ford. We talk about him in our open as he knocked away a couple of passes in the final drive against Sioux Falls. And, yeah, worthy of an autograph, no doubt. I would take that in a heartbeat <laughs> after those two pass breakups two weeks ago. And there's Connor Degenhart, backup quarterback for the Pirates, the pride of Holy Cross. And I think the Pirates, it's so essential in any form of football. Get off to a quick start. Establish your game plan. Establish the tempo of a game. That's what Dave Mogensen, the head coach of the 
uh, Iowa team told us before the game, we have to slow this game down to our liking, play at our pace, not their pace. And the Pirates, on the other hand, we know what they can do in terms of their turbocharged offense. Okay, but that doesn't mean the, that Rod Miller wants that offense to be the conservative. Corner. They want the to play a clean game, offense, Julie defense, Taylor. special teams. They haven't had it Iowa in all three facets. Even though they're 4-0, still a difference maker. Well, let's see who wins this toss. The Pirates have won the toss. And offensive lineman. Jake Gadone says we will take the ball in the second half. Won the toss and deferred the option to the second half. So the Iowa will defer. receive on this side. And the Iowa Barnstormers will get the football to start tonight's ball game. There is Thomas Owens and Alejandro Benefield. See, if I'm winning the toss, and I say this all the time on Boston College broadcast, I'm taking the ball. Bill Belichick was a firm believer. You always, you always play defense first because then you can have a double score second half but that's to me doesn't make much sense I want to establish my offensive consistency early as Thomas Owens is a huge part of that offense as we detailed in our open and if he gets one touchdown it's number 75 in his outstanding indoor football league career and now the Mass Pirates mascot and the UMass Lowell River Hawker on the field Mick Monihoff wants a t-shirt I'm not sure they have enough range on those t-shirt nah, guns to reach you don't, at our level. Don't think I'm going to get it. Matter of fact, I did get a couple of requests, and we'll have to see if we can use our influence or maybe to score one. You got to know somebody. Uh, <laughs> I know a few, but probably not the right people. Story of my life. So the Pirates will be kicking off. Josh Gable was working on his ability to kick the football a length of the field on a kickoff through the upright. If you do that, you get two points for the deuce. Both kickers, as a matter of fact, even his competitor tonight, Gabe Rui, who used to kick with the Pirates, was saying this scoreboard here in the Sanga Center is one of the widest and lowest in the league, and it's really tough to kick the ball past it without clipping it. So trying to get that deuce could be very, very difficult. An architectural quirk. And here is the opening kickoff. It's going to bounce at the five-yard line. And that is Fritz who picks it up. And he returns it just shy of the 17-yard line. Jefferson Fritz is a fascinating player. We'll get to him throughout the night because he's everywhere. A ubiquitous presence, one of your favorite words. That's right. He's an old classic Iron Man. He can play every position, including safety, which is his primary spot, but one of the top defenders in the IFL. So it'll be first and 10 for the Iowa Barnstormers as they'll start from the 18-yard line. Give you the Pirates starting defense after this snap. First and 10 at the 18. The quarterback is a running quarterback in Darius James Peterson, and he is flushed out, and he will run on first down and slide just shy of the first down. That's an eight-yard rumble, and he broke contain as Calvin Bungage was an on-rushing defensive end. Went right by Peterson, who can do that. He's one of the best rushing quarterbacks in the league, and check out the break of the contain. That's going to be problematic for any defense. So, after the run, call it second and two. And so they'll spot it at the 23-yard line. And quick toss to the wall. That is a catch made by Keon Williams. And that will be good enough for the first down. Williams is the leading receiver for the Barnstormers. And he's emerging, says their coach, Dave Mogensen. Still learning to play the position. Came from Eastern Michigan and Buffalo. Was in two schools. Was productive at both stops. But part of the learning process, part of the maturation process as a receiver in this league, running the correct routes. First and 10 at the 19. Trey Long and Darren Wilson also out there. Rob Washington is the running back for Darius James Peterson. Give the offensive line in a second. And they will do a read option. And Peterson does a nice job of faking, 
and he gets maybe a yard on the play. You have Chris Stotter along with the center, Joe Bastante and Richard Gaskins on the front line. So Peterson has run two of three plays. Joe Bastante, the Barnstormers center, is the pride of Stonehill College. Down the road in Easton, Mass. So after the run, gain of one, call it second and nine at the 18. Wide side is the right. Here comes Calvin Bundage, and he has the first sack of the night. Calvin Bundage started the night with one and a half sacks, and he gets the first sack of the evening for Massachusetts. He was a one-man wrecking crew against Sioux Falls two weeks ago. Unblocked. Just take a seat. Peterson, no room to run or hide, and Bundage deserves to celebrate. He's been one of the best defenders by far in this league. Already with 13 tackles, 10 tackles two weeks ago, and that's his second sack of the year. Julius Turner, Guy Thomas, and Jamin Brooks defensively with bondage. Devin Hafford, Matt Elam, Darius Williams, and Eugene Ford in the secondary for the Pirates. So after the sack, it turns into third and 19 back at the 21-yard line, and here comes the rush again, and spinning away as the quarterback, Peterson throws complete. That is Trey... Long, who makes the catch, and he is upended, but still shy of the first down at the 16-yard line. And almost back-to-back -back sacks as Guy Thomas just missed, coming up with a tackle back at about the 10. Not sure how Peterson got out of the wrath of Guy Thomas. There's a bro blocking breakdown up front for Iowa that they're going to have to adjust because Massachusetts is running free, and that's problematic for Peterson, but it's fourth and seven. From the 17-yard line, the wide side is the right. Peterson, two-step drop, there's a flag on the play. Peterson will take off and throw on the run. Missed his receiver long at the three, but let's hold on, there's a flag right at the midfield strike. Dave Mogensen, the head coach, has his arms extended. He's not happy. Jeff Illegal Knight. defense. Illegal defense. Number 50 was on the line. Five-yard penalty. On Julius Replay, Turner. Fourth down. He was not in the right alignment. No. Nope. On the defensive line for the Pirates. And the Pirates will not get off the field. Last week, Iowa had a much different start to the ball game. They went down 22 to three in the first half. They eventually came back but lost the game. But they were victims of 22 unanswered points when they went to the locker room. So it turns into a fourth and two at the 12 yard line. And now we have a whistle and a timeout. Iowa. We'll take one as well. Iowa driving on their first possession. We are scoreless with 10 and 11 to play here. So we'll stay here as Iowa will figure out how they're going to attack this fourth and two at the 12 coming up. Interesting timeout by Mogensen. Maybe he saw something in the Pirates defense that he wanted to adjust to. But the chess match, it happens in the IFL. And not an easy lead to coach, and that's for sure. Mogensen's been around a long time in indoor football. He's originally from the Chicago area. Director of player personnel a couple years ago for the Albany Empire when they won a championship. So a tactician. And he has a quarterback, Peterson, who is extremely athletic. So fourth and short, ball in his hands, usually a good thing. There's your misalignment by Turner. Shooting through the wrong gap. Causing the penalty flag. and. A throw that Peterson would like to have back anyway because Long was wide open. He just misfired. So, once again, we are looking at a fourth down, and I guess three officially, back at the 12-yard line. Peterson, I think we got motion. False start, and I believe it was on the wide out on the near side.
double flag and one thrown in the direction of Dave Mogensen, their coach. Ball start. Offense, number three, that's a five-yard penalty. Replay fourth down. After the play was over, sideline warning, Iowa head coach. So Iowa gets the sideline That is an additional five-yard penalty, start. and the so Iowa coaches are warned that any future violation will result in the loss so of privileges for that coach for eight. the remainder of the game. As they'll spot it. Should only be a five-yard penalty, correct? Fourth and 14 no, now. Fourth and 14. Yep. So they're back at the 22. Peterson steps back, fakes. Now pumps and takes off, and he's going to be tackled at the 12. He'll still be about three yards shy of a first down of the Pirates. We'll turn over on down. We'll step aside with a timeout. 9.47 to play in our first, and the Pirates get the ball in a scoreless ball game. That's a missed opportunity for them. Walk in the strip, she gon' make you bad. I'm fly, you looking dummy. I'll probably get fried, I look like a mummy. I'm getting this cash, it's Monday to Sunday. I guess you won't talk if it ain't about the money. My boys in the trap and they jump like a bunny. Got pounds and f***s, it ain't nothing funny. I'm up on the side and I keep the coming. If I gotta reach up, I'ma keep that down. Where I slide in that coupe, I keep that pump. We done went right this f*** all the way to the sun. Get deep in the pot, get deep like a plumber. Why would I keep her? I never went love her. I just went f***ing and gave to my brother. Eat it for dinner, oh, eat it for supper. Welcome back. Pirates have the football with 9.39 on the clock, and the offense comes out on the field with quarterback Alejandro Benefield. Again, Tavion Thomas will be a running back with Isaac Zico, T.O. Redding, and Thomas Owens, the wideouts, Devon Donaldson, Jake Gadone, and Jeremy Cooper on your offensive front. First and 10 Pirates, football at the 13-yard line. Defense gave it to them. We'll see if they can capitalize. Benefield wants to throw deep for Zico. Touchdown! For Zico, his fifth touchdown of the season. Owens, or rather Benefield now, with 13 touchdowns to lead the league. And the Pirates lead it one play and a score with 9-19 here in the first. Couldn't ask for a better start than that, and a beautiful pass by Alejandro Benefield. Clean pocket, three-step drop, straight fly route by Isaac Zico, who feasted on this secondary last year when he caught 14 balls for 157 yards against Iowa. And Zico, an athletic performer out of Purdue, and that's like a gift from a quarterback god, that type of pass for a receiver. Absolutely, 37 yards for the score, and here is... Josh Gable on for the extra point. The placement down. The kick is on the way, and this one is good. So the Pirates lead it seven to nothing with eight minutes and 42 seconds on the clock as Isaac Zico pulls in the first touchdown of the night from Alejandro Benefield. Yeah, see that that's the aggressiveness you love from Rod Miller and the Pirates offense, including. Uh, Bones, their offensive coordinator. It, that's what you want to see. If you're a fan of the Mass Pirates, you come here, you know they're going deep. You know you have Isaac Zico. You know you have Thomas Owens. You know you have Tia Redding. Utilize your weapons and they put Iowa right on their toes. And I think that's something that Dave Mogensen was concerned about, their head coach. Benefield, man, just so precise. Building off two weeks ago when he was 15 of 16. And Zico, it's one of those backyard plays, Mick, that you used to run back in your Philadelphia days with you and Vince, Vince, Vince Papali, Papali. Yeah. from the uh, Eagles. <laughs> not not the Mark Wahlberg version. No, you're talking the real Vinny. Yeah. The real Vinny Papali, of course. But isn't that something you'd call in a gym class? Pretty much. Go deep. But the funny thing is, Dave Mogens has said, you know, we don't get beat that deep that often. Boom. <laughs> right out of the gate. 
35th career touchdown catch for Isaac Zico as well. So now you have the seven to nothing lead. Do you try that, Deuce? Why not? Rub some more salt in the wound. Well, here is Josh Gable, and he will kick it about four yards deep. Williams has a seam. He's at the 25 and has one man to beat. He's going to take it back for the touchdown. And Iowa says, take that. We're on the board. I guess the deuce might have been a better option. I think so. That's about a 55-yard touchdown return for Keon Williams. Well, they will kick a point and try to tie up the ball game with 8.16 on the clock. Keon Williams. Wow. World-class sprinter's speed and right up the seam. A sea of humanity opens up for Williams, and he capitalizes on that. Any returner in the IFL would have scored on that if it was that wide open. Gabe Ruiz, extra point is on the way. This one is good. We have seven minutes and 51 seconds to play in our first quarter and a tie ball game. Pirates and Iowa tied at seven. We'll come back in a moment. I love Lowell. It's always great to be here. Whoever has the knowledge also has the power. That's what this is about. Yeah, what happened there? That's on me. Congratulations to you, expanding it. We're growing. We're yeah. growing quickly. one score variety the Pirates had the 37 yard touchdown pass from Benefield to Zico one play and a score the ensuing kickoff comes back 55 yards for a touchdown this is what we're talking about when you talk high scoring indoor football league action yeah you can't you can't go away no just when you feel like you can maybe go get some popcorn and some candy, not not the case, because you're going to miss something. Gabe Rui with a low line drive and the big hop, and this is Dallas Daniels about five yards deep. He comes up the middle, and the flag does get thrown as he is tackled at the 20-yard line, most likely against the Pirates. Double flags as well. You would think one would be a hold. Big seam up the middle for Daniels. Yet... As Daniels runs, had one called back last week, as you remember. Yeah, he runs north-south, which is what you should do as a returner. In an optimal situation. Return, holding, receiving team number two, that penalty is declined. Holding, receiving team number 54, that penalty is accepted. Half the distance to the goal, first down. So two holds. The old double hold against the Pirates. The one on Devin Hafford is accepted after the one on Guy Thomas was declined. So the Pirates will have it first and 10, and they're going to spot it at the eight-yard line. Ty Tate, Chuck Manning, and Arthur Randall defensively with Ian McBurrow, along with Tyrell Pearson, Simeon Gatling, Jefferson Fritz, and Javon France defensively for Iowa. 7-23, first and 10, Benefield. Back to the goal line, now throws to Tavion Thomas, complete, and he is upended at the 16-yard line. Watching Tavion Thomas, much different type of back than Jimmy Robinson, and that's a good change of pace when Robinson plays again next week, as he's expected back. Think about it, it's the old thunder and lightning situation. Jimmy Robinson goes 5'8", 180, and I look down on him a little bit. Tavion Thomas has said hello to him. He's 6'1", 230. He's looking down on you. He 
one good shot, I'm, I'm in about the third row. So here we are at second and one. At the 17, it is complete. That is T.O. Redding, and Redding has the first down and more up to the 20-yard line. Well, Tier don't look now. I'm sorry, John. No, I was just going to say T.O. Redding could be your forgotten target with Owens and Zico, but he's not certainly a forgotten man in the eyes of their offensive coaching staff because he can certainly score six easily. Don't look now. The Bennett Bills three for three. <laughs> Something about that perfect game. I'll tell you. He only missed once two weeks ago against Sioux Falls. Owens comes wide to the near side. Dallas, Daniels, and Zico are in motion. It is Thomas, the big back, fights off two tackles and more. And he's up to the 15. He'll be about four yards shy of a first down. You won't see many harder six-yard runs than that one by Tavion Thomas. The definition of moving a pile. Eludes the first line of defense, slip tackle, and then keep the legs churning. Jimmy Robinson-like run, except with a little bit more power behind oh, yeah. it. Daniels wide to the far side. It'll be Owens and Zico in motion. Low snap. Thomas handoff into the second level across the 10 and a first down. It'll be first and goal. Pirates coming up. Well, the Pirates are grinding it out. Going to spot it down at the nine-yard line. Yeah, that's a good, good way to go, especially with the 230-pound back. Grind him out early and then hit him over the top or hit him with a eight-yard dig route. And Thomas will love to keep getting fed. Just like us during the pregame meal. This is true. Uh, workhorse variety, no doubt. The wide side is the far side. Two in motion that way. And the toss goes to Tavion Thomas to the five. And he'll be five yards shy of a touchdown. It is Ian McBurrow out of Morgan State on the tackle. Yeah, McBurrow's making a lot of tackles for them on this drive. That's not good news for Dave Mogensen. Because that's your second line of defense. Correct. Linebackers. Safeties, yeah, they're going to make a lot of tackles, especially in the IFL, because that first line, if they're not doing their work in the trenches, it could be a long day for the defense if your defensive line is getting pushed around. That'll be Chuck Manning lining up over the center, and it is Benefield faking and scoring the rushing touchdown. Alejandro Benefield with his fourth rushing touchdown of the season, and the Pirates are back out front. So the Pirates lead it 13-7 with the point bending. With three minutes and 34 seconds to play here on the first. Well, both Pirates drives producing points. One of the one play variety. And this one, they spaced it out a little, little bit. Yeah, it took Zico two seconds to find the end zone on the 37-yard pass. And this one, fantastic fake. Play action by Benefield. Ty Tate. Bought what he was selling. Defensive lineman went right by Benefield, went to the right. Benefield went to the left. An easy six. Gable made his last. We'll see if he makes this one. Try to give the Pirates a 14 7 lead. The kick is on the way. It is good. 2.55 to play in our first quarter, and the Pirates are up by seven. We'll come back to the Saga Center in just a moment.
Welcome back to the Saga Center as it is Alejandro Benefield. What a great fake. Everybody buys it, and he's into the end zone as the Pirates lead it by a score of 14 to 7. That's the sleight of hand that Benefield is so comfortable with the ball in his hands. And like Peterson, gives you that added dimension of being a skilled runner. So here is the kick. And once again, Williams, who brought the last one back, takes it about six yards deep. And he's up to the 15, breaks a tackle across midfield and down at the 23. That's about a 32-yard return. Well, Rod Miller told us he wants the special teams to be cleaned up. They worked on it during the bye week. It's an area where he's not extremely pleased with at the moment of the Pirates. And there's been some seams. Williams had a touchdown return moments ago in this one. Hard running on his part, not so much a seam, but he used the alley to his advantage. And still a lot of room to maneuver there for the returner. First and 10, 23-yard line on the Pirates' side of the field. Peterson sends a man in motion. There's nobody there for a handoff, so he'll take it himself and get one yard after the tackle by Julius Turner. Now, you alluded, John, to the over-under total of 81.5 points. The Pirates came in as a 14.5-point favorite. That's courtesy of Gate City Casino, according to DraftKings. So... Right now, I have to say the Pirates on place when you're looking at that uh, over-under total. Yeah, I think before the game, you and I discussed how this could be your overnight if you're playing the Pirates. True. And their offense is certainly capable of that, averaging 40 points per game, ninth in the league. Second and nine at the 22. Williams goes in motion with Wilson. Peterson with a two-step drop from the 20. Rolls right, look out, throws down the wall, and it's incomplete. There are flags that get thrown out. We may get a roughing, but we'll hold on. As James Niamwaya was closing in on the quarterback. Niamwaya, a local product out of Andover, Mass. Jeff Knight will let us know. Here we go. There are two fouls on the play. Personal foul, offensive pick, offense number three. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 50. Those penalties offset, replay, second down. Julius Turner called for the roughing the passer, defense alignment from Rutgers, but an offsetting penalty. Personal foul against Keon Williams. So it sets up a second and nine in Pirates territory. So second and nine at the 22 after the offsetting penalties. And they lose the football, and Peterson falls on it. The handoff was completed to Rob Washington, who fumbled, and Darius James Peterson had to cover up. That's the zone read complexities where if a running back and quarterback aren't on the same page, you are in extreme trouble. Absolutely. And Washington running with it. When he didn't have the football, Peterson tucked it too, too much, and that created a timing issue and a fumble. Third and 14. Now back across midfield at the 22-yard line. And Peterson with a two-step drop goes deep, or rather short, and uh, missed threw it on the hop. He threw it on a little dig route to the back. But we got another flag or no? No, it's just incomplete. Or do you have There one? is one down, yep, at the okay. 21. Penalty against the barnstorm. Correction, 77. This drive is off the hinges for Iowa. A perturbed Robert Washington, who's their bell cow back, is upset with Peterson for spiking it. And now we're going to get a long range. Field goal attempt by Rhea. Well, Gabe Rui comes on. They're going to spot it at the 15. So this will be a 43-yard attempt by Gabe Rui. Looked pretty good in warm-up. High snap. Kick all the way. It's blocked. 
Calvin Bundage blocked it and is picked up by Matt Elam and he returns it to the 16 yard line. And the Pirates take over on downs with two seconds left leading by seven here in the first quarter. How about Calvin Bundage? What an athlete. And he is unblockable at the moment. Matt Elam maybe a little shaken up. Calvin Bundage, Oklahoma State star and a special teams demon. Unblocked though. And that's been a problem throughout the first quarter for the Barnstormers Stormers, as they're having issues up front on both lines, offensive and defensive, and that's going to end the first quarter. So the first quarter is complete, and the Pirates lead it by a score of 14 to 7. We'll come back to the Saga Center in just a moment. In 1912, a group of immigrants founded a financial institution that would be accessible to all, and Jean d'Arc Credit Union was born. Today, our guiding principle remains the same. We share a common thread. We are all connected by our community and our passion for creating a brighter future. We're more than just a place to bank. We're a trusted partner in your financial journey. We are Jean d'Arc Credit Union. Game time. The IFL and Build Your Base are back in your communities in 2024. Build Your Base has prepared our teams to bring fun and excitement to the youth in our communities, along with priceless lessons about good nutrition and the importance of staying active. With Build Your Base, our goal is to instill healthy lifestyle principles early in life so they can carry these lessons with them as they grow. Learn more about Build Your Base at buildyourbase.org. Welcome back here to the Saga Center, ready for the start of the second quarter. 14-7 Pirates, Mick Monaghan and John Mita Perel. John, we look at our keys to the game tonight. Massachusetts, are they maintaining gap integrity on defense? Not too bad. Are they establishing the running game early on offense? Yes, they are. All right, with Davion Thomas. And have they limited the improvisation by Darius James Peterson, a quarterback? Done a really nice job with that. So far, the Pirates are accomplishing their goals and lead it 14-7. And I'm going to throw special teams in there as well. Yeah, you got a block kick. In, in pre increased production on the special teams level will be beneficial for the Pirates and Calvin Bundage moments ago. Uh, flags all over, and that interception will not happen. It's a dead ball. The Pirates started early. Luckily, <laughs> if you want to look at it that way, because that ball was picked off by France, and he would have taken it to the house for six for sure. Javon France, interception won't count. Offside defense number 93. Five Offside penalty. defense. I didn't see that coming. Both of us were definitely surprised by that development. Well, I'll stand Instead, corrected. It's Chuck Manning, defensive lineman from Austin P. The guilty party. So it'll be first and five at the 11. Another pick your poison moment. Do you go a quarterback draw with Benefield or? Hit a receiver like Zico to Owens or Redding in the flat. Well, with the powerful running so far of Tavion Thomas, Benefield really doesn't have to run, so he won't. It is Thomas to the goal line. Did he get in? Yes, touchdown. Tavion Thomas, his first of the season. Good call, Mick. And an impressive celebration by Tavion Thomas. 
So the Pirates now lead it 20 to 7. As they score right away, going just 16 yards in two plays. Thomas from 11 yards out. Celebration time. They'll break a tackle right here at the five. Simple. East West, wide open crease, left side of the line. Nice job by Cooper. Left tackle to open it up. Slow snap, kick on the way. This one is good by Josh Gable. Pirates increase their lead to 21 7 as the PAT goes through. Well, the Pirates have scored all three times they've had the football so far in this ballgame. Rod Miller wanted domination in all three phases. Check, check, check thus far. And looks like the Pirates have figured out the weaknesses of the Barnstormers who already look defeated if you want to go by body language. Certainly a large part of this game to play, but a rough start for Iowa. A team 0-2 already. Coming back from a 22-3 halftime deficit to make it a game last week, but they lost 49-41. So you don't want to get behind too far against this Pirates team. No, you don't. Hey, chance to tell you that Inside Lowell is local news information on all things Mass. InsideLowell.com. If Lowell is your home, this is your place. And Cornerstone Bank sponsors the Pirates with 12 locations across Central Mass. You can trust Cornerstone Bank to be there when you need them. Another nice crowd at the Sangha Center as Pirates continue to build and est establish a home field advantage in their first year in Lowell. A lot of people coming out as the ball falls off the tee on Cambodian New Year night. As a matter of fact, coming up at halftime, we'll hear from Roddy Mom, the first native Cambodian to be elected a state representative in the state of Massachusetts. Here is Gable's kick. Low line drive, bounce and roll. This is Jefferson Fritz from about the eight across the 20 to the 21. That's where it'll be first and 10 for the Iowa Barnstormers. Well, so far tonight, we've seen Zico with a 37 yard touchdown reception. We've seen Benefield with a five yard touchdown run and Tavion Thomas taking one in from 11. The Barnstormers only offense so far is the kickoff return. Kick return by Keon Williams for the touchdown. First drive was stifled. They were moving the ball effectively, but backfired on them. They got off the field on a, four, on a turnover on downs, and credit to the Pirates defense for adjusting. From the 21, Peterson had it knocked away, incomplete. Give it to Julius Turner, who rejected it. Defensive line of the Pirates winning up front. Not the Charlie Sheen type of winning, but the other type of winning. <laughs> True. Well, the big mitt came out. Turner knocked it away. You mentioned he played his collegiate ball at Rutgers. And that's pretty good for a 285-pound defensive lineman. Rod Miller needs a timeout. He's upset despite the block. Timeout taken by the Pirates. And we'll take one as well. 12.43 to go here at the first half. 21-7, Pirates leading Iowa.
is Dave Mogensen as his team trails 21-7 here before halftime with 12.43 on the clock. And they are home next week for the first time. Our fans in Iowa watching. That's right. Uh, they will be against the Arizona Rattlers next week. Dave Mogensen made it a point to tell us. Encourage the local fans to come out and watch that. Well, here is Washington got away from one, but not the others as Elam runs him into the wall along with Kenneth Durden. Durden and Elam made sure the former Philadelphia Eagle, Rob Washington, was not going to get away. A pulverizing hit by Kenneth Durden, adding on to the strung out play by Elam, who made the initial hit. Durden piling on, and we heard that up here at our location at midfield. Ferocious shot from Kenneth Durden, but that's a textbook IFL tackle. Absolutely. Third down, and we're going to call it eight. Iowa. Iowa's going to call timeout as they trail 21-7. A chance to tell you that Auto Fair Sports Dome facilities have over 80,000 square feet of top-of-the-line sports turf to host your rentals, camps, leagues, training, clinics, and more. You can check them out in Hooksit and Goffstown, New Hampshire. www.autofairsportszone.com. Be sure to mention the Pirates when booking your event. A professional environment with a friendly family appeal. And also, if you're dealing with a sports injury or looking to improve overall health and wellness, Evolved Health Chiropractic and Sports Medicine is available six days a week with two convenient locations. To serve you better, visit them online at EvolvedHealthChiropractic.com to schedule your appointment today. Who is it looking for that? Well, I could probably use it. We all want to feel better, don't we? Yes, we do. Third and Especially eight. as we get older. Mm. Maybe you do, but not me. 22-yard <laughs> line. Peterson's going to go deep. Has a man and over. Threw him about five rows. It was intended for... Trey Long, but nobody had a chance to bring that one in. And when the ball goes in the stands, it's a keeper. You keep it. You keep it. Not only do you come to a fun game, you get to keep a ball, perhaps. Double coverage by the Pirates secondary. Stride for stride with Trey Long, the receiver from Shaw University, as they're going to attempt another field goal as Mogensen is hunting for points. Well, Gabe Rui going to attempt a 44-yarder. Kick is on the way. This one has the distance, and it is no good. Just wide left. So, Rui has attempted a few. One was blocked. And the kid's running away with the ball. He doesn't have to run. He can keep <laughs> it. I think he wants, wants to make sure that he does keep it, but a valiant stand once again by the Pirates' defense, and Distance was good by Rui, but wide left and more momentum for Massachusetts. One thing I've noticed, a bit dejected sideline comportment by the Barnstormers. That is your third defensive stop of the night. And that's a large reason why they're dejected. Well, here's the thing, too, especially in the indoor game, as you well know. If you get two to three stops, usually you're in the driver's seat. Oh, yeah. It is so hard to come back, especially if you're going against an offense that is high potent like the Pirates. And that one's tipped and it falls. No, I think it's, I don't think it's complete. Is it? I thought it hit the turf before it was picked up. Looked like an interception to me, but we'll have to get another look. That's Fritz, Jefferson Fritz, safety, who had 12 interceptions his senior year. Benefield. Problematic pass. He did get it. He did get it. Wow. Personal foul. Illegal pick. Offense number 11. That penalty is declined. It's also an First illegal down, pick. Iowa. Penalty declined. Illegal pick against T.O. Redding. So, barnstorm of football, and that's what we're talking about. That's the lift they needed. That will lift their spirits. Jefferson Fritz leads the league in tackles. That's his first interception of the year. He had an outstanding career at Division III, Mary Harden. 62 games, he had 195 tackles, 24 interceptions. So you've got to look at his ball skills. 24 picks in college, first 
interception in the IFL. He runs a 4-4 40-yard dash. They are going to take another look to see if he did come down with it. But from our angle up here, behind the play, it looked like he did bring it down. You see, I thought it had hit the turf before he got his hand under it. But from here, it looked like on the replay, he did get the hand under it. The question is, did he secure it 100%? So that's what they're going to look. But naked eye, I didn't have it. Replay, it looks like he does. So if it does stand, that's exactly what they needed. Oh, yeah. It keeps them in the game. To get 21 back in the game, right. So here we go. Tipped. Bad pass by Benefield thrown behind the receiver. No. The point of the ball comes down before he uh, tries to corral it. I think you might be correct. So watch. He'll get the hand on it, but watch the point of the ball. It's going to hit the turf and right see there. right there. So he doesn't really have control. Nice job by our crew. But you know what that means? Outstanding work. I was right on my initial call. He didn't you were, have it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Must be conclusive. Well, I think that is. And here's the call do you from want Jeff Knight. Do you want a pretzel? No. You. <laughs> Keep the pretzel. It is an incomplete pass. Yep. Good call. But the look what we foul had to do for the to make sure it wasn't. Will be enforced half the distance to the goal. An interception. We replay now, that's how down. close it was. And that's the importance of excellent camera work. Yep. Replay was all over it. That's Chad Fillion and his crew tonight. So, incomplete pass. It'll be second down and 10. And the football is still on the two-yard line. So, new life for the Pirates. Dodging a bullet. That's a big bullet. Valiant effort, though, by Fritz. Because you figure they go in and score with a short field. It's a oh, seven-point yeah. game. So, here we go. Benefield. Hands off to Thomas. Straight forward. Out to the nine. Getting six, seven yards a pop, and again, the tackle made by middle linebacker challenge. McBurrow. No yeah, so Tavion Thomas filling in for Jimmy Robinson, who is not playing tonight. Expected to be back next week, just getting the week off. The leading rusher in the IFL. You mentioned this is Iowa's third consecutive game away from home to start the season. The Pirates will go on the road for three straight uh, after tonight's game. Be in Quad Cities next we week. We won't see him again until mid-May. Correct. Zico and Owens go in motion, and nothing happening here. First time tonight they've really gang-tackled Thomas for no gain. Yeah, that was impressive defense. Chuck Manning leading the surge around the edge to corral the 230-pound Thomas. So the football at the 10. And I think we may get a timeout taken here by the Pirates, and we do. Second charge timeout. We have 9.20 to Matt play Jesus. in our first half. The Pirates lead it 21-7, but a big play coming up when we come back. Hi, I'm Greg Crossman, owner and physical therapist here at Complete Game Physical Therapy. Dari is our 3D markerless motion system. It uses eight high-speed cameras to capture movement. It's able to capture movements such as joint torques and forces that are hard to pick up with the naked eye. It's really helpful for not just athletes, but active individuals to help them get back to the activities that they love. A trip to Wellness at Lane's Family Entertainment Center is fun on top of fun. Enjoy 36 lanes of candle pin and 10 pin bowling. Play in our state of the art redemption arcade or take a swing in one of our five indoor golf and video simulators. Elevate your VIP experience in our powwow event room with exclusive 10 pin bowling. Catch the big game with great food and drinks in our Firewater Tavern or enjoy outdoor fire pits and lawn games on our 8,000 square foot patio. For a great night out or your next special event, Wellness at Lane's is your destination. Welcome back to the Saga Center, and we have a big down in front of us. My question is, 
what down is it? Because we had the interception that was not an interception. Thomas ran up to the nine, and he just got stood up. Scoreboard and the marker says third down. By my count, it would be fourth. You might be on something. Home field advantage. The extra down game. And here we go. The IFL. Welcome to Missouri. Uh, Tigers, right there. Here's the ball down the field. It is incomplete. And then the extra shove, and that's going to draw the flag as Tio Redding is thrown into the boards by Javon France. Unnecessary by France, and he's going to pay for it. So that down stuff becomes kind of inconsequential. Well, it does. Lead, it? You keep giving the Pirates newfound momentum. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Automatic first down. First down. <laughs> All right. So personal ball, foul. Ball at midfield and uncatchable pass. Yeah. There's no reason to hit him into the boards like that. Nope. I know you're upset. You're losing the game, but come on. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. Drive extenders. Absolutely. So what was France thinking? Not sure. I guess he just wanted to practice his hitting. First and 10, 25-yard line. Pirates have the football. Up 21-7, 8.45 and a clock moving. And it is to the wall. We have flags. False start on the offense. And with that, John, I'm going to tell you that WCAP 980 AM is proud to be the exclusive radio partner of the Pirates. You can hear all the games home and away. You can also stream it at 980WCAP.com. Voice of the Valley, definitive talk, news, weather, traffic, sports, music, and information station for Merrimack Valley and Southern New Hampshire. Maybe the after effects of a layoff one week off for of the Pirates and Pretty clean for the most part throughout this first half, but some moments where they've looked off kilter, that last one magnified it. First and 15 at the 20. Davion Thomas going to get that back. He's up to the 25 and then down at the 23-yard line. So it sets up a second down and about eight. Love the call by Bones Bagante, Pirates offensive coordinator. You put Thomas in motion in the backfield, and creates a gap in the A gap, that's the center gap, and a big hole up front for Thomas to feast on. So they're actually going to put it at the 22. So it's second and seven coming up. 7.45 and a clock moving. Pirates with touchdowns tonight. A reception by Isaac Zico. Touchdown runs from Benefield and Tavion Thomas. Second down. Play action fake. Benefield with time. Now goes to Thomas. He makes a catch. He can get up. Now, now he's tackled. So he would have done better to drop the ball because he's going to lose a yard with that acrobatic reception. So it's tough to tell a guy to yeah, not try him. to catch it. <laughs> I know. And a heck of a catch by Tavion Thomas. Uncharacteristic misfires by Benefield on this drive. I guess we gave him the kiss of death after his 15 of 16 against Sioux Falls, but what a catch. What a grab. Yep. And then the tackle by Chris Oakley. Still a third and 11 upcoming. Oakley just joined the uh, Iowa Barnstormers. Played with Quad City last year. Third down, Benefield wants to throw deep and it's gonna be a flag and I think we're gonna get interference. Zico, the intended target, was held up by Simeon Gatling. Pass interference, defense number nine. 15 yards from the previous spot. Pass interference against down. the Barnstormers. Self-inflicted wounds are mounting for this Iowa defense. And anytime you give the Pirates an extra opportunity, it could be lights out. You know, the defense coordinator, Anson Yarborough, has got to be pulling in his hair out, whatever he has left, because he does have the shaved head. But you know what I mean. I mean, <laughs> I mean if he just had when hair, you think you're getting off the field. If he had hair, he'd, pu he'd pull it out. That's true. You borrow some of mine. And yours, for that matter. Yeah. You have some nice lettuce. I got to get to the hair. The <laughs> stylist very shortly. A little long in the tooth, Well, you're a product guy. I know you, first you love that product. <laughs> first and ten. <laughs> the football is spotted at the nine-yard line, so it's first and goal. First and goal at the nine. Now, Redding in motion. 
Clutching is Benefield. There's a flag. That's going to be holding. He throws it away, and it's going to be on the Pirates. That is a hold. Well, this has not been the cleanest Holding. quarter All for no. either team. No, it's penalty. Replay first down. stops and starts. And this is what Rob Miller was talking about. Play a clean game in all three facets. Had it in the first quarter, not so much in the second quarter for his Pirates. And conversely, issues mounting for Iowa at every turn. Yeah. First and goal now back at the 19-yard line. And after a while, you got to let them go. And there's the grab right there. Yep. Ty Tate was held up. Defensive lineman who had some time with the Pittsburgh Steelers. As Thomas checks back into the backfield for the Pirates. And Tia Redding heads to the bench. And we have a timeout coming here. Pirates call a timeout. We had 5.56 to play in our first half, leading by a score of 21-7. You know, we have seen some bright spots tonight for the Pirates, uh, especially on the defensive side. you got to like the play of Calvin Bundage, who already has a sack and a block kick. Bundage has been fantastic. If you want to go an early line candidate for Defensive Player of the Year, put Calvin Bundage at the top of the list. And, yeah, that's a build-around guy. That's a linchpin. And opposing offenses have to game plan against him. Look at guys you game plan against on the de defensive side for an op op opposition. Isaac Zico in your picture, number 88. First play of the game, caught a 37-yard touchdown. All right, so who else is out there with him? You're going to see Zico along with Owens, I believe. You said Dallas Daniels went to the bench, right? So it is, nope. Daniels is back. So Daniels with Owens and Zico are your three wideouts. Yeah, Redding's uh, on the bench. Tavion Thomas is the setback, and they give it to Thomas, and he will rumble to the 16-yard line, and that is all. Stop and start by Thomas. Still got a few as you're inside the 20. So second down and goal at the 16. With 527, Pirates may uh, run a little bit here and take some time off the clock. They'll get the football to start the third quarter. Benefield not listening. He wants to throw and does. Gives up to Thomas, who is tackled at the 12. It's amazing they didn't listen to you. I don't know. I'm calling a pretty good game so far. But a nice flip by Benefield. <laughs> you are. <laughs> to Thomas go the easy route it was like a run third and goal at the 12 it's an extension of the run game see but now you got to get to the end zone in the next two plays so we'll see if that front of Arthur Randall Ty Tate and Chuck Manning can apply the pressure on the quarterback Alejandro Benefield Benefield sends the two in motion near side Drops back to the 20, looks, and throws underneath, in and out of the hands of Thomas Owens, and it's incomplete. Good coverage on the play by Jefferson Fritz. That's a rare drop. I think it was tipped. Deep drop by Benefield. Wants Zico, oh, Zico. and he should have had it. You're it right. was... A good play by Gatling, rangy coverage by Gatling, and now Rod Miller's going to offer a field goal off the right foot of Josh Gable. They're going to spot it at the 19. It'll be a 27-yard field goal attempt by Gable. He's made all his extra points tonight. Let's see if he can cash in for three. High snap. It does get down. The kick on the way, and this one is good. Gable has the field goal, and the Pirates lead it now by a score of 24 to 7, with 4:28 to play here in our first half.
Well, gold star for the holder, backup quarterback Connor Degenhardt gets the ball down. Yo, laces out, laces out, laces in. No, it's not Charlie Brown, it's Josh Gable. Put the ball down, bang it through the upright, but Degenhardt, much like holders across America, don't get enough credit for their role in field goals and extra points. That snap was very high, and he did get it down. Here is a line drive kick, and this is going to bounce one yard deep. Keon Williams going to be getting away from one tackle, but Zico finally tracks him down and has him at about the eight-yard line. So well Williams done. on a return. Well done by Isaac Zico. Not only a great receiver, but also a key member of their special teams unit and a 17-point lead for the Pirates, the essential drive of the game moment for Iowa here in the first half to gain some momentum headed towards halftime? I would agree. They got to get back in the game. And you got plenty of time to do it. Dave Mogensen said he wants his teams to have extended drives, eat up some time, keep the ball out of the Pirates' hands, and cash in. That's a good time for them to do it if they can pull it off. That'd be the M.O. Williams goes in motion. Peterson takes off, dives forward. He'll be about Three yards shy of the first down, gain of about seven. And that's who you want. Eight yards a pop for Peterson if he can run like that. Injured all last year. Two years ago, led the league in rushing. Prolific rusher at the collegiate level when he played at College of Idaho and FCF school. Second down coming up, very manageable. Football at the 16-yard line. Fake to Williams on a jet sweep. Plenty of time for Peterson. Loads up, and it's almost intercepted. Oh, no. Eugene Ford's going to see this in his sleep. <laughs> he had two go through his hands near the goal line last week, and you can see the shrug of the shoulders here and the shake of the head. He had a pick, and it got away. It's unfortunate for Ford because he plays it perfectly. He's in the right spot. He does the hard thing correctly and then he can't bring down the interception how many Ooh. defensive backs aren't in the right spot especially in this league Eugene Ford seems to be always in the right spot just as to work on his ball procurement yep ball security underneath route this is Wilson makes the catch and he's upended at the 20 yard line but he has enough for a an Iowa barnstormer first down So the completed pass to Wilson will keep the drive alive. First and 10, right at the 20-yard line. 24-7 with 2.48 to play here in our first half. Iowa trying to get back in the game as they have first and 10 at the 20. And Peterson, one step drop, throws to the marker, complete. And that is Trey Long who makes the catch. That's what the Pirates defense is dealing with now after the missed opportunity on the dropped interception. Second and five of the 25 keeps the drive alive. They're managing this possession well, keeping it conservative, as you mentioned, try to kill some clock, but get in the end zone if you're the Barnstormers. That's right. Single coverage on Long as Williams has him locked up right there at the bottom of your screen. Wilson comes in motion. A fake to the running back, and the quarterback will get back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all for Peterson. On the tackle is Guy Thomas. One of our keys to the game, gap containment. Maintain your integrity on the defensive line if you're the Mass Pirates. They did that. No better example than that one by Guy Thomas, 250-pounder out of Colorado. Don't get fooled by the sleight of hand of Peterson, the quarterback. Undrafted signee with the Colts in the NFL and then one game in the USFL with Houston. For Thomas. Third and five, still at the 25-yard line. Peterson dropped back. Here comes the rush, and he'll let it go down the sideline. Incomplete. The receiver sold out. Durden was 
defending on the coverage. I think it was Long who went up and over the boards. It was, but nobody pulled it in, and it's incomplete. A lot going on here. Peterson scampers around coverage, pays for it. Then Durden, sticky coverage on the intended receiver line. Both of them go in the stands, and no, you cannot take Kenneth Durden home with you. Nope. Send him back on the field. Football, yes. Player, no. And here's your one-minute warning. And we have the one-minute warning in front of us. Fourth and five at the 25. And oh, look out if coming, you're in that front row. Here they come. right into your living room. You know, the great quarterback-receiver combinations will tell you that yeah, you can probably throw the ball about a yard and a half out of bounds and let your guy go get it. A lot of players do that. One in particular who was excelled at it was Marty Gilliard, who played with the Pirates for several years. Two and a half yards is asking a lot. <laughs> that was asking a lot. It was asking yes. a lot. I'm with you, though. It's that tight window you need to perfect. If you're a quarterback in this league, you have to throw through those tight windows. Fourth and five at the 25-yard line. Peterson sends his receivers out, and here is Williams with a catch for the first down, breaks a tackle and more down to the 11-yard line where it'll be first and 10. Got to like the shiftiness of Williams after the catch. Yeah, he returned a kickoff for a score in the first quarter, their only touchdown thus far, but we heard from their coach, Dave Mogensen, that... He was going to be one of the best receivers in this league as long as he keeps continuing his ascension and he's learning how to play. And he can miss anybody on any level, whether you're indoors or outdoors. He has that type of ability. Absolutely. First and 10 at the 11-yard line. Peterson with a two-step drop. With time, looking, looking. Now gets flushed out. He's going to keep it himself. He's at the 10. He's at the 5, and he's out of bounds. Now, he was tackled, but again, we're inside one minute, so the quarterback and, or any ball carrier can take himself out if he runs into the wall. So this will set up first and goal. First and three. goal. That's Peterson at his finest. It is. Pocket breaks down. Looking in the flat for a wide out. Eludes Turner, and then go around the left edge. Stop the clock with 26 seconds remaining. I misspoke. It's actually second and one at the three. They can get a first down at the two. Yep. So second and one at the three. And they'll throw for it. It is tipped and intercepted. And finally, it's picked off by Eugene Ford. There was double coverage, and the Pirates stoned the Barnstormers with no one, 20 seconds left on the clock. No one deserves an interception more than Eugene Ford, and he gives the ball up as a souvenir. Well done, Eugene Ford. Ill-advised throw by Peterson, and the beneficiary was Eugene Ford in the Pirates' defense, and just tuck it and run. You have second and one at the three. Good tip there. Athletic play by who else but Calvin Bundage. Pass deflection to the waiting yards of Eugene Ford. He wasn't going to drop that one. Great job by the Pirates defense. A vaunted stand, but man, that's going to hurt if you're the Barnstormers offense. Fourth stop Fourth of the stop. night. Yep. Wow. That throw for a touchdown here. Something. Benefield loading up. Now goes underneath. That is Zico. He gets to the 15-yard line. He'll be four yards shy of the first down. They're going to hurry up with seven. They can spike it. Now, do you kick a field goal with four seconds left? Flag do down. You... Hold on. The legal formation, number six lined up inside three yards outside the guard. That's a five-yard penalty. Still first down. Illegal formation in their haste to get to the line of scrimmage and run a play or spike it. Well, the field goal will be very, very long with four seconds left. I think maybe you uh, try the Hail Mary. 
you're going to get the football to start the third quarter. You could go in with a 24-7 lead, but I, hey, I'm being greedy. Your double score theory. And that will be the end of the first half so much as for that. time runs out. Okay. It was a good thought, though. Well, it lasted 24-7 at halftime. The Pirates lead Iowa. We'll come back with our halftime in a moment. You think it, we ink it. From custom business cards to flyers and postcards. Promote your brand with signage and elevate your event with eye-catching banners. Specialty apparel for your company outing, family trips, or sports teams. We also offer an extensive selection of promotional products. Visit either location in Lawrence or Lowell. Your printing is our business. Proud sponsor of the Massachusetts Pirates. Welcome back to the Saga Center at halftime. The Massachusetts Pirates with a 24-7 lead over the Iowa Barnstormers. Very entertaining first half. And we've seen four defensive stops by the Pirates, and that's usually lethal when you're talking about trying to stay in a game. So that's what Iowa has been up against. you got to love Calvin Bundage with his effort in the first half. Yeah, this was outstanding, Mick, as the block by Bundage stifling the field goal attempt. And he seems to be always in the right place at the right time. And how about this rush by Calvin Bundage to bring down the quarterback Peterson celebrating like the rest of this defense with his head coach Rod Miller. A one man wrecking crew Calvin Bundage. Well, let's take a look at some of the touchdowns of the Massachusetts Pirates as this game saw the Pirates jump out to an early lead and it's a 37 yard touchdown pass to Isaac Zico. Pitch and catch wide open Zico blazing by the coverage and an easy touchdown throw for Benefield and then the sleight of hand on the keeper around the edge for Alejandro Benefield who can do it all one of the more dynamic offensive players in the league and yeah, that made the score 14-7 at the end of the first quarter and then the Pirates would add some other touchdowns by Tavion Thomas an 11 yard scamper and then the defense stepping up big again as you saw Julius Turner making a big play. And then there's Bundage again yep. with the uh, tip and the interception by Eugene Ford. What a huge lift as Barnstormers were going in for a score, but Eugene Ford coming up with an interception thanks to his teammate Calvin Bundage with a deflection. Once again, we're at halftime, 24-7. We'll come back with more halftime festivities at the Saga Center in just a moment.
Texas Pirates win their first championship in franchise history. We're back here at the Saga Center at halftime as the Pirates lead it by a score of 24-7. My pleasure to be joined by Roddy Mom, the first native Cambodian to be elected as a state representative in Massachusetts. First off, congratulations and thanks for coming in tonight. Nick, thank you for having me. I understand that it's Cambodian New Year, so Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Matter of fact, the kickoff for Cambodian New Year is tomorrow. It's actually three days, Nick. And you can imagine the celebration lasts the entire month. And so it is such a great time. It is one of the biggest celebration in the entire country of Cambodia and also all of the world, actually. So you mentioned a celebration. Yeah. I understand this is your second Massachusetts Pirates game. It is. What do you think of what the Pirates are doing this season as they're undefeated? Nick, first of all, I have to give, uh, take my hat off to uh, Jawad, who can go anywhere. The fact he chose to be right here to take Lowell as their home. We are ecstatic, first of all. I'm so excited. And everyone that talks about the Pirates, they all want to come. And tonight, proof is that my entire suite is all packed, by the way. So. <laughs> It is awesome. I mean, I, I can't say enough about the Pirates being in Lowell. You mentioned Jawad, your team, and bringing the team after five years in Worcester here to Lowell. What does it really mean economically, let's say, for the city of Lowell to have a, a team like the Pirates here? It's, it's something new. It's something different. Well, Nick, there's no secret. We lost, uh, obviously, a bunch of uh, professional team from the baseball and all that. So the fact that we have the Pirates here in Lowell, the economic to bring to Lowell is immense, and Lowell needs it. And that's why I'm ecstatic on behalf of the entire uh, city that to welcome Dwight here since day one. Now yourself, personally, a chance to assimilate into a leadership role. What does it mean to you to be the first native Cambodian to be a state representative in Massachusetts? I. I I'm just going to say that, first of all, I did not even set out to be any an elected official. To me, it's all about helping people. And so when a friend kind of asked me to take this role on, I kind of said no. <laughs> so long story short, as you can imagine, here I am serving five term and up for my sixth term. It is totally immense, meaning that I get to represent all of the citizen. I do not go by different ethnic color. I see everyone as my constituent. I serve everyone all the same. And that is what being, I guess, mom is all about. And that's my last name, by the way. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you for what you do. And also, thanks for representing the Pirates. Roddy Mom, thanks Make for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. We're at halftime. We'll be back in a moment. It doesn't matter. 
and all the energy in here is devoted to them. When they come in here, the attention's on them. Actually seeing someone like walk out the door better than what they came in is just like the best thing. If you're functioning correctly, we're not only gonna get you back to where you were, my goal is to empower you and to get you, you know, better. You're gonna perform better than we were before. I'm super thankful to be out here riding my dirt bike again. They're the ones who go and tell their friends and they have the best stories to tell. Gate City Casino, totally transformed. Over 500 games, including old favorites and hot newcomers. Poker, our new state-of-the-art room awaits. Raving roulette, Spanish 21, or something fresh? We've got it all. It's your favorite hangout, now redefined. Gate City Casino Nashua, your winning adventure starts now. What is insurance? Sure, insurance transfers certain risks between parties. Without insurance, the economy would really stop. In simple terms, insurance is like community. It's protecting every last asset that somebody has built over a lifetime. You're in it together, you feel supported. From the beginning to the end. What insurance is, just taking care of people, is definitely a way of life. Well, we go from elected official in Roddy Mom to John Mita Perel, who's back in the booth. Never an elected official except in high school when I made the student council. Oh, there you go. <laughs> hey, what'd you think of this first half? I thought it was a terrific first half. If you're a Pirates fan, not so much if you're a Barnstormer fan, uh, I think it was a game of momentum shifts on the defensive side for Massachusetts. Stifling drives, four missed opportunities for Iowa. You never see that, rarely see that in indoor football. But that's credit to Rod Miller's defense and thinks they're coming together. He's still seeing some weaknesses, but they're coming together and maybe they're playing that complete game that he wants on the defensive side tonight. Offensively, big plays, and that's what the Pirates do. The, when the Zico pass to the Tavion Thomas uh, pass in the flat to Alejandro Benefield running it in for a score to Josh Gable contributing with a field goal on special teams. So it's all coming together at the right times. I would say if there's one area where the Pirates maybe want to fine tune in the second half, it would be eliminating some costly penalties. Yeah, the penalties, I think, also were a product of the bye week. I, I think you're probably correct. I think that's a usual detriment when you come back off a of bye Things seem to be a bit off kilter in terms of installation. I'm with you. That definitely needs to be cleaned up. So I think other than that, you'd be nitpicking with a 17-point Pirate first half lead. Two things we'll say before we go to break. Do you have your Pirates gear? Well, you can represent the Pirates everywhere you go by going to MassPiratesFootball.com and click on Shop. And the Pirates' next home game we is going to be against... The, that's going to be in May. It's in May, right? We got the next all the way to May. May. May 18th. It's a Saturday afternoon game. Okay. Now their next game. Next game next on the week road is Quad City. Quad City. Right. So that takes care of that. Now when we come back, we'll uh, have more. I don't think we'll have a little bit more halftime festivities as the Pirates lead it by a score of 24 to seven. We got Drake and the Chelmsford Iowa out there. Start. Well, I know, but I like Chelmsford. Always like. 24-7 Pirates, back in a moment. Hi, I'm Greg Costin, owner and physical therapist here at Complete Game Physical Therapy. 
Diary is our 3D markerless motion system. It uses eight high-speed cameras to capture movement. It's able to capture movements such as joint torques and forces that are hard to pick up with the naked eye. It's really helpful for not just athletes, but active individuals to help them get back to the activities that they love. event is going on now at all eight auto fair locations we need your trade so we're paying up to four thousand dollars over book value just go to autofair.com to see how much your vehicle's worth and we'll give you up to four thousand over that value plus save even more with auto fair's famously low prices and low financing on every vehicle in stock We are back as the Pirates lead it 24-7 here at halftime. You can see some of the Pirates' brain trust. Mark Stout has the clipboard, former Pirates head coach. Isaac Zico pointing up as one of the touchdown receptions in the first half. As a matter of fact, Zico, two catches for 45 yards and a touchdown. Tio Redding, one for 12, and Tavion Thomas has three catches for 15 yards. And 58 all-purpose yards for Thomas filling in for Jimmy Robinson, who has the night off. So eight carries, 43 yards, and a touchdown. That's production, and that's a added bonus for this Pirates offense. Benefield has a rushing touchdown from five yards out. He was also seven, uh, six of seven for 72 yards and a score. We'll come back to the Saga Center in a moment.
Look like I'm in place. Walk in the strip, she gon' make it bad. Looking dummy, I'll probably get fried. I look like a mummy. I'm getting this cash, it's Monday to Sunday. I guess you won't talk if it ain't about the money. My boys in the trap and they jump like a bunny. Got pounds and is it ain't nothing funny. I'm up on the side and I keep it calm. If I gotta reach up, I'ma keep it down. Where I slide in that cool boy, I keep it calm. We don't wait right this all the way to the sun. Get deep in the pot, get deep like a plumber. Why would I keep her? I never went lugger. I just went the end game to my brother. Eat it for dinner, oh, eat it for supper. Why would you keep a little in circle? Why would you keep a little in circle? We are at halftime, and you got to like the young fans who have great ball security. We talk about ball security all the time. She's, she's not like, letting go of that one. She's looking like she's ready to throw it, too. And <laughs> you want to talk about textbook throwing motion. Great shot by our terrific crew at the Saga Center, headlined by our producer, Chad. Everybody doing a terrific job tonight. Eugene Ford finally got that pick in the first half. Amongst the fans. That's his second pick of the season. Second pick of the season. Probably could have had it four or five by now, <laughs> but you know what? He's playing terrific defense. And that's what the Pirates did in the first half. And they do get the ball to start the second half for Rod Miller, who gives final instructions over on the far side. And if you're Iowa, this is such a vital make or break type defensive sequence for them as well. You allow a score here, you go down 31-7. That is an awful lot to ask. That's true. Now, Mark Stout, former head coach, still on the staff, uh, going over what he has to accomplish on special teams, can tell you that you think it, Omniprint inks it. Omniprint also offers extensive selections of promotional products. Visit Easel Location at 92 South Broadway in Lawrence or 287 Appleton Street in Lowell or visit online at www.omniprint.com. DP.com. And did you know that the Lowell Sun offers free subscriptions? That's right. Sports scores, information, all that without the pop ups. Visit LowellSun.com today. So we are set as Gabe Rui will be kicking it away. With the run up, it bounces, takes a crazy roll, and it has to come out of the end zone. If you get tackled in the end zone, it's one point. And it looks like Dallas Daniels did get out to the one to avoid the Uno. The dreaded Uno, and a good job by Daniels to now, actually fight out of the end zone. Yeah, but there's a red challenge flag, and here's what it is. If you are contacted against the wall, you are tackled. Now, did he get contacted before he broke the plane coming out? Jeff Knight will tell us. Offside, kicking team number nine, five-yard penalty, first down. Wow, doesn't Offside matter at this point. Team. That type of that type of night for the Barnstormers would have been an interesting call. You're wow. on it, Mick. See, he's not. That would have been one. Yeah, that would have been, been one point. Would have been because he contacted him into the wall. Wow. So missing the one-point opportunity is. Simeon Gatling. So would have made it 24 to 8. And the ball back, right? Correct. So another bullet dodged. <sighs> wow. First and 10 Pirates to start the third I quarter was at the six. <laughs> and they're playing the Rattlers next week at home. That's See what I did ask. there? Yes, I saw that. <laughs> the Rattlers, I think, if I'm correct, are winless. I'll let you know that in a second. Tavion Thomas gets the handoff and gets up to the nine yard line. The Rattlers are one and two. One and two. Okay. They do have a win. Duke City Gladiators and San Antonio. They are, are winless yours. in the Western. And in the East, Sioux Falls, Jacksonville, and Iowa. Iowa. All winless. Okay. So after the run by Thomas, you have second down. And call it five at the 10. So we'll see what Benefield can do. He has one touchdown pass in that first half. Zico comes in motion. And the toss goes to Tavion Thomas. Stood up in the backfield, going down. Tackle for a loss. And the first guy to get there is Jefferson Fritz. 
but Ty Tate cleaned it up. And Ty Tate helped string it out. Fritz kept his kin contained. Safety, one of the best defenders in the league. All-American at Division Three, Mary Harden. But Ty Tate, as we get another look. East-West run by Thomas. Strung out perfectly by Fritz. Good call. And Ty Tate. Yeah, Tate coming out of uh, Millersville. Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference first team performer. It's your neck of the woods. It is. Tell them Mick sent you. <laughs> <laughs> Meta field. Back to the goal line. Throws. Incomplete. Good coverage on the play there by Javon France. Do we have a flag? Meta field. It was dumped in the end zone. There is a flag. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 14. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first Christian down. Christian Russell, the guilty After party. After the play is over, sideline infraction. Iowa, the defensive coordinator. That's a five-yard penalty. Also a sideline infraction sideline against the defensive the coordinator. Five-yard penalty tacked on to the personal foul penalty against Russell. And I think he lost his sideline privilege for the rest of the game. He's out. So that is Anson Yarborough, who picks up his headset and walks off. Yep, that's Dave Mogensen now, their head coach on the field. Wow. First and 10, Pirates. Football's at the 23-yard line. It is Davion Thomas still going. Thomas finally brought down at the nine. Terrific run by Tavion Thomas, who's been unheralded tonight, filling in for Jimmy Robinson. Tyrell Pearson saved the touchdown for the Barnstormers. But once you get by that first line of defense and you're 230 pounds, you are going to gallop through some defenders. Low snap, good ball handling by Benefield. And then that left side of the line, Cooper, offensive lineman, open it up. He's 295 pounds, 300 pounds. And Thomas right through the gap. Second and goal, first and goal, rather, at the nine-yard line. And is Tavion Thomas to the five, to the three, touchdown! Tavion Thomas, second touchdown run of the night. And the Pirates lead it 30 to seven. Nine yard run for Thomas. What do we say about a first drive touchdown for the Mass Pirates? If I were allowed one, look out. Well, look out below. Tavion Thomas looking like Jimmy Robinson. Yeah. A Wally Pip moment, perhaps. You never know. Nah. <laughs> I'm only kidding, of course. So here's the extra point for Josh Gable. The kick is on the way, and this one is good. Pirates lead it by a score of 31 7. We'll come back with more to Saga Center in a moment. Back here at the Saga Center, Tavion Thomas, second rushing touchdown of the night. Jump cut by Thomas. Wide open right side. Donaldson, 320-pound deep offensive lineman, opening it up. And then Thomas again, giving you another look right into your living room. We joked about Jimmy Robinson not playing and Thomas filling in very capably, the Wally Pimp moment for him. But what it does do is give your offense more diversity between Thomas and Robinson. I said earlier, it's thunder and lightning. You get the 
thunder from Thomas and the lightning from the 5'8", 185 pound Robinson. And there's another caveat to that. I will let that out of the bag in just a second as this goes into the crowd as it's touched by a fan. Jimmy Robinson had 11 receptions for 89 yards, two touchdowns. Eighth in the league in receptions coming into tonight's game, and of course he's inactive. That means if you have a receiver go down, you can have Robinson, who was a pretty big time receiver in college, who could yep, play that role, be the jet sweeper, could call. have Tavion Thomas as the power back, Interchangeable parts because we've seen Thomas catch balls as well. Yeah. Wow. Just another great weapon the Pirates have at their arsenal. Pretty, so, pretty good. Comes to the 25 yard line. And be Larry, first Dave. There you go. Barnstormers got to crank it up as they trail 31 7. And we see Kyle King first time tonight at quarterback, and he runs for five yards. King getting his first action. 6'3", 225 pounder out of Mary Harden Baylor, uh, where he did win, was that D3 National Championship? Yep, Division Three National title, and his teammate was Jefferson Fritz, who was All-American safety at the Division Three level. So Dave Mogensen looking for a spark. Didn't get in the first half when this team was stymied by the Pirates defense on four possessions. Second and six at the 21. They're going to run Washington, and Washington will be about a yard, well, maybe a couple inches shy of a first down. Well, we mentioned that Iowa has struggled a little offensively this year. They are 15th in the league in scoring at 27 and a half points a game. They only have seven right now. And they were last coming into tonight's game in offensive efficiency. So that's been a problem. Yeah, that was sticking with Dave Mogensen. Offensive efficiency in the red zone. Not capitalizing on drives. And you're down 24 here. You're inside the 20. This is a good time for them to do it. Third and one at the 16. Get the first down. And they have. As it is King who holds on to the football. First and 10. King is built like a fullback. 6'3", 225. Kind of a Taysom Hill effect. So they'll put him at the 14. The center is Bastante, who brings him up. Williams will be in high motion with Wilson. King with a two-step drop. Now throws a little jump ball complete. That is Trey Long who brings it down inside the 10. Tackled by Julius Turner at about the eight. Good catch by Long who was used early and then was stopped. Now he's, looks like he's struggling to get up. But an athletic catch by Long to catch the high throw by King. That will give us a stoppage with the injury timeout. We'll take a timeout as well. 8.09 on the clock, 31-7. Pirates leading Iowa back in a moment. I love Lowell. It's always great to be here. Whoever has the knowledge also has the power. That's what this is about. Yeah. What happened there? That's on me. Congratulations to you, expanding it completely. We're growing, we're yeah. growing quickly. Welcome back here to the Saga Center. We have eight minutes to play in our third quarter. 31-7 Pirates. And trying to get to his feet is Kyle King. Another look at it. Um, I'm sorry, it wasn't King. It was Trey Long. 
And Gankak tackled after the reception. I think the way he landed, awkward. Looked like his knee was affected by the hit by Turner. And now he gets a nice round of applause as he's walking off under his own power. Well, that'll put Iowa at a disadvantage because Deion McShane's out of the lineup tonight. Taylor Porter's out of the lineup tonight. So they only had three wideouts coming in. Tamaric Vanover is inactive. He was just acquired from Green Bay. So right now they really only have two wideouts. And Vanover is quite a talent. They can get him back on the field. Here's a quick toss that's incomplete. That pass was bounced, intended for Washington. But a late flag. So hold on. And it'll turn into third and five at the eight, depending on the flag. So here's Jeff Knight with the call. Illegal defense. Number seven was in the belt, not mirroring. Half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. So the replay the down half the distance. Darius Williams in an illegal formation defensively. Second illegal defensive formation of the night for the Pirates. And Rod Miller tries to get an explanation from Jeff Knight. Those are some areas you talked about, about maybe getting cleaned up a little bit. Penalties. All around, it's been a dominant performance by the Pirates, but penalties have been slightly problematic. So second and one at the four. Williams comes in motion. And off goes to Washington. He'll be tackled down at about the one. Washington's a load at 5'11", 220 time for the Philadelphia Eagles. He was extremely productive at Old Dominion and Valparaiso after leaving Charlotte. He's from Charlotte, North Carolina, went to Charlotte. And he left there and he went to FCS and that was the right decision because he was Mr. Touchdown. There you go. So with that run, we'll spot it just inside the two. So we'll call it first and goal at the two. Iowa looking for its second score of the night, and we're going to get a timeout taken by the Barnstormers. Iowa. So Iowa calls timeout with 7.04 to play here in the third. Oh. There was no sense of urgency getting up to the line of scrimmage, and that's what Dave Mogan said. I can, even though I'm behind him, I'm reading some lips here. Uh, you can see that he's very. You upset. must have a sense of urgency. It's football one on one, indoors, outdoors. Get up to the line with a sense of urgency. First and goal to two. Act like you want to be there and exert your will against the defense. And they weren't ready to do it, no. in Mogensen's estimation. I got to tell you, fueled by passion for sports and personal growth, House of Athletes is committed to inspiring athletes to break out of their comfort zones and reach new heights in athleticism. So we have 7.02 to play. Third quarter. Keep an eye on Chuck Manning, number 93 in their backfield, full house backfield. Yeah. Got the power eye. They give to Washington. No go nowhere. Loss of about one on the tackle. And making the first hit was Devin Hatford. And now a challenge flag comes out. If I had to guess. Iowa's challenge in at number seven was in the belt unaligned on the previous play. It is under further review. And that's what I was going to guess. The fact that the Pirates might have had too many men inside. inside. They call the belt, but basically too many men inside the goal line defense. Now, when the ball's at the two, you can crowd a little bit more. But that's usually with the linebackers being, being closer. So you see seven coming up. He's more of a corner. Yep. And that's Darius Williams. The belt is the area five yards beyond the defensive lineman. Runs sideline to sideline and disappears with the snap. So that belt there is the three-man defensive line envelops the belt. But it does get a little more compressed when you're in the goal line. 
you can okay. move up just a little bit more. You get that leeway. That's up to Jeff Knight to decide whether it was a violation. Rogenson as the defensive coordinator now with Yarbrough in the bench area as he was ejected for his second sideline violation. So it, were across the line at the snap. It is an illegal defense. So they will call the illegal on defense on the punt. A good challenge the by Replay the Barnstormers. And they're Iowa looking for anything. Oh, yeah. Down 31 7 and 642 left in the third quarter. Any signs of life? So it'll be first and goal at the one. Massachusetts is challenging. But there was an illegal formation on the previous play. It and now the Pirates review. are going to challenge. Because, like I said, you can't, that, that belt, lack of a better word, gets a little tighter when you can play your goal line. Some of us are familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm raising my hand. I need to get my belt a little tighter, too. But a chess match by Rod Miller. But you see how close he was? He actually had his seven, and I think that's, well, Make sure that's Williams. He actually has his hand on the on the defensive front, almost well from the snap. So what's wrong with the formation though by Iowa? There were three players in the offensive box, which is an illegal formation. It on was the an offense. illegal formation by the Barnstormers. Wow. So penalties for Iowa. for Iowa. Massachusetts is not charged with a timeout. And because they were correct on two challenges, they have earned a third challenge. Wow. What a call by Rod Miller. So he challenged the offensive set. That's something. It might be an inexperienced quarterback, or it's just a quirky alignment. You have the tailback behind King and the fullback in front. First and goal at the two. After the offsetting penalties, more or less. Here's a touchdown run. And that is Rob Washington with his second rushing touchdown of the season. After all that. That's right. And a worthwhile drive for the Barnstormers. As we said, searching for any signs of momentum. They get a little bit there. Thanks to the Washington run, a guy they didn't utilize enough in the first half because they were down 24-7. Gabe Rui comes on for the extra point, trying to make it 31-14. Here's his kick. It's on the way. It is good. 31-14 is our score at the Sanga Center. Pirates lead it here in the third. Back in a moment. John Mita Perel here at the Saga Center tonight. Pirates with a 31-14 advantage over the Iowa Barnstormers who get their second touchdown of the night. This one from Rob Washington from two yards out. Yeah, that was a easy run for Washington just starting late in the backfield and the momentum carrying him and hefty back anyway a tough guy to stop in a goal line situation Gabe Rui has it teed up Isaac Zico is deep 
He will kick it. It bounces high, three yards deep. Zico comes out to the 10. He's in the second level, and he has one man to beat. He's going to take it to the house for a touchdown. 53-yard kickoff return for Isaac Zico. That's his second all-time kick return for six. What a breakdown for the Barnstormers. And I was watching the kicker, Rui, at the 15-yard line. He collided with Jefferson Fritz, and now Fritz is hurt. He is walking off the field under his own power, but looks like a leg injury. And the alley was there for Zico. Huge hole opened up on the left side. Went up the left hash. Zico has 4-5 speed in the 40-yard dash, and that was an easy run back, similar to the one we saw earlier from Iowa. They lose Fritz on a collision with a kicker. That That'd be a big that's the last thing you need. Yeah, he's their best defensive player. Yep. Josh Gable, I believe, has been, because of death, perfect tonight. Uh-oh. Placement down, kick on the way, and this one is good. Pirates lead it by the score of 38 to 14 as Isaac Zico has the 53 yard kick return for the touchdown. That's about three yards deep. Baltimore chop too and Zico turbocharge. Once you get by that first line in a indoor football, yeah, you got you got some positive things in your future. And the dejected barnstormer was Javon France, defensive back chasing Zico a valiant effort on his part but a counter punch by the Pirates who have dominated throughout now regain the 24 point advantage well this game really has been all Pirates tonight four defensive stops in the first half led 24 7 at halftime Tavion Thomas gets his second rushing touchdown in the third quarter and with 441 to play in the third Zico follows it up from 53 yards away Explosive plays. Yeah. Pirates going to 4 0. And if I'm correct, this will be their 10th consecutive home victory. Yeah. Which I think ties a franchise record. Yeah. Massachusetts Pirates. Follow the Pirates on Facebook. Facebook.com slash MA Pirates. Instagram at Mass.Pirates. Twitter at Mass underscore Pirates. And TikTok at just plain old Mass Pirates. <laughs> Why not? I'd follow them too. They're the best team in the league. Yep, I just said it. Here's the kick. Maybe going for the deuce. Nope. Going to be a little short. Taking one yard deep. This is Williams. Williams already has one back for a touchdown. And he's at the 15 and finally upended by Josh Gable. Who says kickers can't make a tackle? Well, that's what Rui basically gave up on Zico, and that's why he collided with Fritz on the Pirates touchdown return. Credit to Gable for stopping Williams this time because he was headed to the end zone and a yard deep, north-south, and huge zone for him to run through, and there was Gable stifling his progress. He's had a good night returning kicks. That's a 38-yard return yeah. for Williams. And that's something that Dave Mogensen wanted an increase in production with special teams. So that's a benefit for them. At least they've improved in that category. Well, he spoke highly of Williams, and he's showing his uh, fortitude here tonight. Makes the catch here and is upended at about the 8-yard line. The tackle made by Hafford. You think the Iowa Barnstormers is one name that comes to mind? Kurt Warner. Oh, yeah, absolutely. His humble beginnings playing indoor football. But I'm going to test your Iowa Barnstormer knowledge after uh -oh. this snap. Mr. Mr. Quad City's over here. Yeah, there you go. On second and five, it is Washington to the five-yard line. He'll be about two yards shy of a first down. So, Kurt Warner was an all-time passer 
who was the quarterback who then subsequently broke most, if not all, of his records? Said Bonner. No. Our good friend. He's a, a different personal friend. J.J. Uh, Rattering. That is correct. J.J. Rattering. Oh, one of the, How about that? One of the best of all time, J.J. Yeah. Rattering. He's an all-timer. So, we are looking at former Massachusetts Pirates color analyst. Yes, of course. Well. Better known as a Mass Pirates color nah, analyst. Nah, nah. <laughs> I'll tell you a story about him in a second. Here is a third and two, and the quarterback going to keep it and slide in for the touchdown. That is Kyle King's first rushing touchdown of the season. Well, that was Kyle King in every way possible, making the right read, keeping it long enough on the read option, and then scampering into the end zone. Here is Gabe Rui on for the extra point. That was perfect execution by King. Nice play to pull that down. And what a great hold from Jefferson Fritz as it is gone through the uprights for Gabe Rui. The PAT is good. Makes the score 38-21, and Iowa kind of creeping back in with 2.05 to go here in our third quarter. Fritz sh shaking off the injury with a hole, but check out the execution by King. Keep it and just waltz into the end zone, or slide in for that matter. Kyle King's giving him the spark. They were hoping to get it with Peterson not doing it in the first half, the starting quarterback. And Dave Mogensen says, I'm going to go with another quarterback, and he makes the right call, at least at this point. Still a ball game. Don't go away. 17-point lead for the Pirates. But it's all set up by special teams play and the re kick return by Williams, 38-yard return. Absolutely. You see Rod Miller with the headset on, on the field, taking a look. Always thinking about how to uh, improve the defense. Here's a quick J.J. Rattering story. He was a starting quarterback with Chicago Fire and Airplane to Soul, and it was on a tape delay, and I turned the game. I said, J.J., I said, your game's coming up. Turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> He's, we scored the first drive, and after that, it's not worth watching. I can hear him saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Guy was Otherwise great. known as a doppelganger for Ryan Reynolds. Here is the kick. Oh, taken on the line drive by Zico at the 25 and finally brought down. And who else? Jefferson Fritz on the tackle. JJ and I traveled for a year, a couple years on our radio broadcast, and we stayed at a, a, Baltim a Baltimore hotel that was supposedly haunted. <laughs> <laughs> And J.J. and I were not exactly thrilled with that prospect. Oh, we were negotiating which room we were going to huddle in. But that was a heck of a catch. It was. On the line drive hit by Rui. Playing the hot corner. Boy, Red Sox could use Isaac Zico's help based on their sweep at the hands of Baltimore this week and losing again tonight at Fenway to the Angels. I watched one of their games uh, the other day and they were having trouble uh, corralling the baseball. Yeah, fielding is a concern for your hometown nine. Now I thought Okay. 131 to go in the third. New quarterback Connor Degenhardt. All right, Connor Degenhardt. This will be his first snaps of the season in week four. Dagan Hart, two-step drop. Well, look out. Things break it down. Now just throws it away, and it's caught by Tavion Thomas. And it'll go for a yard. And, yes, Connor Dagan Hart is one for one in the <laughs> IFL. <laughs> Hopefully not an injury to Benefield. Still a ball game with 17, with less than a minute to play in the third quarter. We don't want to speculate on that, but... Degenhart, New Haven, Holy Cross by way of Westford, Mass, just down the road from Lowell. Rookie camps with the Chiefs and the Seahawks and threw for 2,251 yards and 29 touchdowns a couple years ago for New Haven. A pass-heavy offense. As Zico in motion gives to Tavion Thomas, who is still going, spinning down to the five-yard line. Board will be first and goal for the Pirates. Thomas is playing a nice game tonight. It's been terrific. Change of pace. We've set it from the jump. Jimmy Robinson, different type of back, but Thomas is 
been ultra productive. He's light on his feet. Really? Look at it's that, the shake and bake and then the spin move. It's like Mick Monning a hop on a dance floor. I don't know about that. Three seconds to go. <laughs> And our third quarter has come to a close with the Pirates driving. They'll have the football first and goal at the five when we start the fourth quarter. Pirates lead it 38-21 over Iowa. 4-0 is on the horizon. Ride the highway, ride the bus. Walk my house, look like I'm in place. Walk in the strip, she gon' make it bad. Looking dummy, I'll probably get fried. I look like a mummy. I'm getting this cash, it's Monday to Sunday. I guess you won't talk if it ain't about the money. My boys in the trap and they jump like a bunny. Got pounds and is it ain't nothing funny. I up on the side and I keep it coming. If I gotta reach up, I'ma keep that down. Where I slide in that cool boy, I keep that pump. We don't wear out this thought of way to the sun. Get deep in the pot, get deep like a plumber. Why would I keep her? I never went lucky. I just went the end game to my brother. Eat it for dinner, oh, eat it for supper. Why would you keep a little in sugar? Why would you keep a little in sugar? Welcome back to the Saga Center. Pirates have the football. First and goal at the five-yard line to start our fourth quarter. Davion Thomas, 89 yards rushing tonight, is going to block for the quarterback, Dagenhart, and maybe got to the six. Going to call it a loss of one by Dagenhart. Call it second and goal. Six yard line. Chance to tell you that Inside Lowell is your news information and all things pirate source. InsideLowell.com. If Lowell's your home, this is your place. How about that? Congratulations, Chiara. Front row of the Mass Pirates cheerleaders. She is going to be a New England Patriots cheerleader. Wow. In 2024. Now, you know, Pirates always have a moving up graphic. Gonna have to put her on it. It's like a pipeline from Lowell to Foxborough. Second and goal at the six, and the handoff to Tavion Thomas, nothing. Big tackle by Simeon Gatling. So Gatling comes up with a big stop on Thomas. Third and goal. And some extracurriculars with T.O. Redding and defensive back Tyrell Pearson. Getting chippy in the late stages. Well, you know, the Pirates have a sponsor in Cornerstone Bank with 12 locations across Central Mass. They can trust Cornerstone Bank to be there when you need them. Well, they need some defense. Does Iowa, if they're going to keep the Pirates out of this end zone and stay in this game. Third and goal with the six. Dagan Hart. Pump fake. He's going to take off. No, now he throws. Caught. Touchdown. Wow. Dallas Daniels goes airborne for his first touchdown reception of the season. I thought he was throwing it away. Remarkable composure, so did I, by Connor Degenhart as he gets his first touchdown pass of the season. Equally good route by Dallas Daniels. Both of them didn't panic as Jawadia team, the owner and president of the Pirates, celebrates with Dallas Daniels and 
that's something that's unheralded too when you have a backup quarterback and he comes in cold Mick his composure how's he going to handle himself in a key spot Connor Degenhart passed the test with all A's here is Josh Gable trying to make it 45 21 placement down kick on the way and this one is good 45 21 Gable drives the extra point home Pirates lead it with 12.30 to play in our ball game. Another look at the touchdown. Ball handling by Degenhart. Low snap. And Daniels harassed in the end zone. Good ball tracked by Daniels as it was a high pass. He had an onrushing defender. Christian Russell crashed over into the stands. So that maybe disrupted his point of view from the ball placement, but he still made the catch. So they didn't panic. That's the number one story there on that sequence. It could have easily broken down from the jump with a poor snap. Absolutely. Well, the Pirates in the second half have scored every points. time they've had their hands on the football. Yeah, they're up 24-7 at halftime. That's right. And they are past their season average of 40 points per game, ninth in the IFL before tonight. So Josh Gable will kick it away. And here's his run up. Low line drive kick. And this will be at the goal line for Keon Williams. And he will not get away from Zico. Forward progress is going to be stopped at about the nine. Well, chance to tell you that Evolve Health Kyra practice has overall health and wellness professionals Sports and medicine available six days a week. Two convenient locations in Massachusetts to serve you better. Join them online at EvolvedHealthChiropractic.com. I love Matt, Matt Elam was cheering on the cheerleaders. Why not? And dancing with them during that stoppage. First and 10 at the 10. Battle of the backup quarterbacks. We're both wear number 17. And this is going to be intercepted. Ford with his second pick of the night and third of the season. Well, he's finally fine-tuned his game, hasn't he? He certainly has. Great wow. route recognition by Eugene Ford. And all he had to work on was catching the ball. And he has. That's his second interception of the night. And a bad decision by the backup quarterback, King. He threw it in no man's land. And... Ford roams free, and defensive backs need short memories in this league, and Ford has that. Doesn't let much bother him. Pocket breaks down. King throws off his back foot. And then Ford, easy peasy for him at the 20-yard line, and deals with the boundary effectively, too, to hold on to the ball. And here back on the field is Connor Degenhart. Don't look now. Fifth stop of the night for the Pirates defense. First and 10 at the 18-yard line. Degenhart with time. Still has time. Now throws. There's a flag. It's complete. T.O. Redding makes the catch at about the 10. Stood up. It would be a first down, but I think we're going to get holding back here at about the 22-yard line. A safe assessment against Navon Donaldson, the right tackle. Replay first down. Who blocks out the sun at 6'5", 335. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Not much sun today in Lowell, but mm -mm. expected tomorrow. So holding is the call. It'll be first and 20. As it goes back to the 22-yard line. Chance to tell you, WCAP 980 AM, proud exclusive partner of the Pirates. Here are all the Pirates games home and away on 980 AM. Or streaming at 980WCAP.com. So here you go. First and 20 back at the 22 yard line. And a ball is loose, covered up by Connor Degenhart. A little sloppy. A little bit. The Pirates is Loss of one. Ty Tate rushed through an unblocked zone to make the tackle and to strip. Tavion Thomas. Thomas Owens has been quiet tonight. He has. The 
veteran receiver, all-time leading receiver for the Pirates. Now, I see Alejandro Benefield on the bench standing and congratulating players, so I don't think he left with any kind of injury. Nice. Oh, hold on. Flags. I'm looking at the same thing you are. And Massachusetts. Look accurate. Massachusetts calls timeout with 10 on the clock, leading 45 to 21. We will step aside and come back as the Pirates are en route to their fourth consecutive victory. What is insurance? Sure. Insurance transfers certain risks between parties. Without insurance, the economy would really stop. In simple terms, insurance is like community. It's protecting every last asset that somebody has built over a lifetime. You're in it together. You feel supported. From the beginning to the end. What insurance is, just taking care of people, is definitely a way of life. In 1912, a group of immigrants founded a financial institution that would be accessible to all. And Jean d'Arc Credit Union was born. Today, our guiding principle remains the same. We share a common thread. We are all connected by our community and our passion for creating a brighter future. We're more than just a place to bank. We're a trusted partner in your financial journey. We are Jean d'Arc Credit Union. We are back and the Pirates are dancing here at the Sangha Center tonight. Why not? They lead at 45-21 as we have about 10 minutes to play in this ball game. All sorts of celebrations. Tavion Thomas, seconds ago, Dallas Daniels with a touchdown catch. Second and 19. Look out, here comes the rush. It's complete The Zico, makes the catch, and he'll be upended at the 16-yard line. So another, Isaac Zico with another catch tonight. And another example of Degenhardt keeping his composure. Pocket broke down, scanned the field, found the open Zico, who always runs the right route. Now, I think it is so important, and you got to give credit to Rod Miller. When you have opportunities, and this is something I think should be done more at the other levels, like the National Football League, when you have an opportunity to give your backup some significant playing time, yeah. take the starter out, avoid the injury, the game's in hand, you're going to need them sooner or later. And this snap goes over his head. It is deep in the center field, and he falls on it <laughs> for the catch. Yeah, Back that ball to the warning was track. Launched. <laughs> oh, it reminds me of other stories I could tell. And I will. We were in China in the <laughs> CAFL, and we, it was Jawad team's team. He yeah. was a quarterback for the Dalian Dragon Kings. They had a center who was not an American. He was Chinese. And he would launch these mortar snaps. shots. <laughs> So we'd be in practice, right? And we'd say, fly ball, deep center field. <laughs> and your team circles under it and makes the catch. Do your best, Harry Callis. And sometimes that ball's out of here. Oh, yeah, exactly. Michael Jack Schmidt. <laughs> fourth, fourth and 25 for the football back at the other oh, going to try a field goal. This ball is spotted at the five. Well, let's call it the four. It's a low line drive. It's going to bounce, and we have whistles. All right, so we will take a timeout. 45 21. Pirates lead at 8 07 to go.
are back here at the Saga Center. It'll be first and 10 with the football at the five yard line for Iowa. They trail in this game 45 21. It's been all Pirates. Both teams with backup quarterbacks in the ball game here in the second half. Kyle King has a rushing touchdown. Here he drops back in the end zone. Here comes the rush. He gets away and comes across the 10 up to about the 13 yard line before he finally lost his hat. And the helmet coming off does not mean he has to leave the game. No. Like college and pro football. But King has proven to be a running threat. And he's given him a nice spark in the second half despite his interception moments ago. Second and two at the 13. And Trey Long. They might have a quarterback controversy brewing. Well, he hasn't played badly. Three-step drop, loading up. He is going deep for Williams. Over the shoulder, catch for a touchdown. Keon Williams with his third touchdown catch of the season. That's a nice catch by Williams. Terrific he has played catch. a pretty good ball game tonight. Yes, he has. He's doing it all, special teams and receiving, but an equally great pass by King. Nice touch. Ball came out of his hands perfectly and led the stride of Keon Williams. Team second half, Iowa last week trailed 22-3 at halftime. They put 38 points on the board in a 49-41 loss, so their second half surges are continuing, and they're going for two. And why not? King, little toss, and does he get in? Yes. Rob Washington makes the catch and powers his way in for a two-point conversion. And that makes the score 45 to 29. We had 627 left in the ball game. Yeah, and that's a testament to their fortitude and the coaching staff driving this team and not giving up. It's looked grim for them for a while. It's been pretty dominant but overall by the Pirates led by over 100 all-purpose yards from Tavion Thomas. The Pirates will look to kill some clock here with 6.27 left and maybe put the game in Thomas's hands. And we saw Dave Mogensen, Iowa head coach, not giving up, working the iPad. Mark Stout trying to line up the Pirates special teams. Chance to tell you, Auto Fair Sports Zone has 80,000 square feet of top-of-the-line sports turf to host your rentals, camps, leagues, training, clinics, parties, and more. Two state-of-the-art climate-controlled environments all year long, located in Hooksett and Goffstown, New Hampshire. Check them out at www.autofairsportstone.com. Onside kick time? Why not? Pull out all the stops. Yeah, I would agree. Give yourself an extra possession. And there and you go. It's right up in the air. It is loose. It's picked up by Zico. And he returns it down to the, call it the five yard line. And the less than advantageous field position for the Barnstormers defense to deal with. That's your detrimental side of the onside kick, of course. And you place the game in the hands of your kicker, Rui, who's a good kicker, but it's just that extra bounce you need, Mick, at all levels of football. I don't oh, care yeah. if you're indoors or outdoors. You need that knuckleball effect, and that didn't have it. Officially, they'll put it at the six. Pirates trying to close it out. Six minutes left on the clock and a 45-29 advantage. What a boost home field's become for them. Oh, yeah. Pirates are tough at home. Be their third home win if they can hang on. Dagan Hart going to hand off to Thomas. Touchdown. Third rushing touchdown of the night for Tavion Thomas. There's your player of the game, Tavion Thomas. They elect to rest Jimmy Robinson. He says, you know what? I'll take it. I'll become the bell cow. 
He's been dancing all night, dancing in the streets tonight, probably in Lowell, Mass. Oh, yeah. Third touchdown, all of them pretty easy as he sheds defenders at every turn. He had a up and down college career at the University of Utah. But although he, he played, was, he was productive. He was an all 12 Pac-12 uh, Pac performer. Oh, yeah, no, he's proven he can do it. Here is Gable's point after. It's on the way. It is good. The Pirates lead it. 52 to 29 with 449 to play in our ball game. We'll come back in a moment. Ride the highway, ride the bus. Walk my house, look like I'm in place. Walk in the strip, she gon' make it bad. been the big night for Davion Thomas. You go back and look, he had a touchdown to start the second quarter that made it 21 to seven. He then had a rushing touchdown from nine yards out to start the third quarter that made it 31 to seven. And then he just adds this most recent one from six yards out to make it 52 29. Not a bad one two punch when Jimmy Robinson comes back next week. And Williams will not be able to catch up to this one as it bounces into the stands. The Unenviable the task for opposing defenses to stop Jimmy Robinson and Tavion Thomas down. out of the Pirates' backfield. And Bones Bagate, offensive coordinator, he's called a great game. Yes. He's changed it up. Yep, he's mixed Started it up. Started with a deep pass. Tends to become pass happy at times. But why bother when you have a rugged back like Thomas? Right and a defense that has been embattled in the early stages for Dave Mogensen as Iowa is on its way to an 0-3 start. Well, they do get a chance to come home next week. Yeah, not easy starting with three games on the road, that's for no, sure. Not at all. First and 10, five-yard line. Kyle King has some time. He wants to throw, and he has long compete at midfield. And Long still going to the 10-yard line, where it'll be first and goal. Flag on the play. And it's back in the end zone. And the way that Chris Stroder is jumping around, it's probably on the offensive line. Yes, it is. Thrown in the vicinity of a hold. Nullifying a chunk play for the Barnstorm. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 78. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot, first down. Unnecessary roughness on the offensive lineman. Chris Strotter. And he's livid. And that's a 340-pound offensive lineman you do not want to get angry. No, I wouldn't do that. It's a rare, unnecessary foul call against an offensive lineman. Personal foul. Back it up to the three-yard line. Much to the chagrin of the coaching staff. Well, you only lose three yards. <laughs> but you, you wipe away a chunk play. <laughs> That's true. Here comes the rush. The Pirates going to get a safety. They will. As King is wrapped up for two. My question was, do you give it to Julius Turner or somebody else? I would give half a safety to Dijaman Brooks, who was huh? the first man through, and Turner cleaned it up. Okay. Both of them threw the A gap. That's the center gap. And flummoxing King, who didn't have anywhere to go anyway because he was 
five yards deep in the end zone. Turner gets exhorted off the field by Rod Miller. And the dominance of the Pirates defense continues and what a performance. Well, Coach Miller said he wanted a dominant performance tonight. I think he got it. He did. He did. And this has been all right. speaking volumes about where this team could be headed. And for those who are keeping score, six stops for the Pirates tonight. Who gets six stops in an indoor football league game? That's okay. incredible. Yeah, it is. It's one of the best in a long, long time. Oh, yeah. I'm, I don't think I've ever seen six stops in my short tenure. You're much older than me, but, you know. I am old. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate that. You won't be here next week. No, I just kidding. I kid because I love, Vic. <laughs> You're not much older than me, trust me. Oh, well. 54-29, Pirates add on two. Although we were talking 80s college football earlier we with were. Dave Mogensen. Yep, we were. Second charge timeout. So Gabe Rui. Massachusetts. Kicking it away. I don't see anybody deep. All right, Massachusetts going to call a timeout with 3.28 to play. Chance to tell you that the Pirates' next home game is going to be way down the line after they go for three games on the road. The Pirates come back home on May the 18th, 105 against Northern Arizona. But the Pirates' next game, they go to Moline, Illinois. 8.05 Eastern to take on the Quad City Steam Wheelers. That's next Saturday night. As the Pirates start a three-game road swing as they'll go to the Quad Cities, then they'll play Sioux Falls, that game at the neutral field in Fargo, North Dakota, on Saturday the 27th. May 11th, the Pirates will be in Des Moines taking on these same Iowa Barnstormers. So three on the road before the Pirates come back home. Pack heavy. Yeah, that's a couple extra bags on that trip. Absolutely. Gabe Rui will kick it. There will be, oh, it bounces. Picked up at the two by Daniels. And he's tackled at about the five yard line. We can't emphasize enough, though, about the experience here at Saga Center and how enjoyable it is. Oh, yeah. Young and old, you can walk away with a football, you can meet some fans, you can meet some cheerleaders, you can meet some players. It's a great time. And when the Pirates come back, it will be a Saturday afternoon game on May 18th. That's a game. If you haven't been here yet, you should definitely circle on your calendar. You will enjoy it. You'll enjoy every second. Terrific football and a terrific game day experience. And a winning atmosphere. I mean, it's not like you're going to see a team, oh, I'll just have some fun. You're going to see some guys who can play. Oh, no, you're definitely going to see a lot of talent. And Pirates lead it 54-29 with 3.14 on the clock. Daniels and Zico will be in high motion. Wide sides to the far side, three receivers on that side, and Dagan Hart going to keep it and run up to the 11-yard line. Or he's finally brought down by who else? Jefferson Fritz. Yeah, the ultimate gamer, Jefferson Fritz. Oh, yeah. He runs between a 4-4 and a 4-5 and a 40-yard dash. It's on the radar of some NFL scouts as he came out of Mary Harden, a Division Three powerhouse. Second and three at the 12. And he's going to throw deep, and it is very close to Zico, but it goes incomplete. Just under throw him. Thought he definitely had him out there. Zico... Good job tracking the ball, come back for it. Would have been a miraculous catch. True. But Degenhardt, not enough air under the pass. That's something he'll learn as the backup to Alejandro Benefield. But he's acquitted himself well, and that's another yeah. sidebar to this one. You mentioned, good point. Doesn't happen enough at other levels of football where backup quarterbacks don't get enough snaps. The only thing that Fritz hasn't done is played offense tonight. He is a uh, he's the third string quarterback third and a backup receiver too if they need him. Here is Tavion Thomas straight forward as he is wrapped up by Gatling. 
130 to go in our ball game. Chance to tell you that fueled by passion for sports and personal growth, House of Athletes committed to inspiring athletes to break out of their comfort zones and reach new heights in athleticism. And the Lowell Sun offering ad-free subscriptions. That's right. All your sports scores and information without the pop-ups. Visit LowellSun.com today. And for those of you scoring at home, if you took the over, you won. That's right. 81 and a half was the over-under. Pirates 54, Barnstormers 29. That equals Ithaca College math. You're over. That's right. How about Tavion Thomas? I think he's going to be your offensive, or rather, player of the game. Offensive, too, for the Massachusetts Pirates. All he did tonight was uh, score three touchdowns and have over a... Now, if he got to actual 100 yards rushing, but definitely well over 100 in uh, all-purpose yards. Yeah, you know what? He kept his legs moving at every snap. This is another run where he just galloped over and through defenders, plowing his way into the end zone. He was determined. He ran with that determination early. Good ball job by uh, Degenhart to hand off to Thomas, who found an open lane there. And... Three touchdowns, not too shabby for Thomas playing in his first game this year. You and I looked at us as he's our player of the game. We looked at each other before the game. Hey, what's up with Jimmy Robinson not playing tonight? Well, you know what? He's got an extra week of rest. Good game management by the coaching staff. Electing not to play Robinson tonight. Maybe they saw something at Thomas during the bye week. Give him some carries and it paid off for them as he is our John Dark, credit union player of the game. That's correct. A big night for Tavion Thomas. And my final read of the night. You think it? Omniprint prints it. Omniprint. Extensive selection of promotional products. Visit either location, 92 South Broadway in Lawrence or 287 Apple Street in Lowell. Visit them online www.omniprintdp.com and here is Tavion Thomas again looking for touchdown number four well he'll get very close to the 18 yard line on a first down last guy you want to see with under a minute to play running free Tavion Thomas with a night he's had in beast mode oh my goodness he is over 100 yards rushing yep Big night for Tavion Thomas and, and the credit, Pirates. Two to the offensive line. Yep. Godone, the center. Donaldson and Cooper, the tackles. And they added Adonis Boone this week, who was a terrific lineman at the University of Louisville for many years. Right. So he'll he be might act, work his way into the lineup. He'll be active soon. Thomas, wide out on the near side. Here you go. Empty backfield set. Dagenhart looking deep. He has thrown to the end zone. And it's incomplete. Redding was the intended receiver. It was actually thrown into the double coverage. Gatling might have got a hand on it first. Good effort, though, by Redding. He got one hand on it. Couldn't pull a Thomas Owens and bring it down with one hand. No, nope. not many can, like Owens did last week, two weeks ago against Sioux Falls, a Sports Center top 10 play for the Pirates. As you get a good look at Rod Miller and his coaching staff, Matt Stout. To the Mark left, Stout. or Mark Scout, excuse me, right. to the left of Miller. Well, another look at the play here. Yep, it was Gatling who tipped it away. Second and ten. Jet sweep. Dallas Daniels breaks a tackle. And he'll get down to about the 12. 38 seconds left in this ball game with the Pirates up 54-29. Did you ask for a better performance? I think that this is maybe the most complete game the Pirates have played all year. It's definitely their highest point total. They had uh, 44 against Green Bay, 49 against Sioux Falls, and here they eclipsed the 50-point mark. The only blemish, penalties. Yeah, that's it. Gave up a touchdown on special teams on the kick return. Thomas, first down. First and goal at about the eight. Two seconds left, and that's going to do it. Pirates will win this ball game by a score of 54 to 29. 
over the Iowa Barnstormers to go to 4-0 and on the season. We'll come back with our post game in just a moment. to the Saga Center as the Pirates win this one by the score of 54 to 29. And John, what a complete game for the Pirates tonight as they go to 4-0. It was, it was just complete domination. And Tavion Thomas was our John Dark Credit Union player of the game. With good reason, he had 18 carries for 120 yards and three touchdowns, over 140 yards for the ball game. And hard yards, and that's what Rod Miller loves. That's what Bones Bagante, their offense coordinator loves. Yards after contact, it's that yak that you need in the indoor football league from running backs. Jimmy Robinson gives it to you, now Tavion Thomas gives it to them. So, what a one-two punch for the Pirates moving ahead. You shouldn't lose the fact, though, that the Pirates actually had six defensive stops tonight. Oh, no. Usually in an indoor football league game when you get maybe two or three, you've done a great job. To get six in a game, that's outstanding. It is, and that's why they were in control from the jump. There really was no doubt about this one. Here's your cross insurance plays of the game. We couldn't even just pick one because it was so complete of, of a performance. That one starting it with Isaac Zico and a 37 yard touchdown. It just stone steamrolled from there. The sleight of hand by Benefield for the touchdown run and the Pirates took over. Nick. Well then they did rely on the you know rushing of Fabian Thomas to really fuel the fire as the game kind of got out of hand. The Pirates led at halftime, 24 to seven. And then Conan Dagenhart comes off the bench and he got into the act throwing a touchdown pass to Daniels. Yeah, Dagenhart did a nice job. Wasn't pretty at times, but he still did exactly what he needed to do. And there's your final touchdown from Mr. Touchdown, Tavion Touchdown. Maybe that's a new nickname for you. There you go. So when you look at the overall effort for the Pirates tonight, you saw two interceptions by Eugene Ford. You saw some big tackles and a block field goal and a tip pass in the end zone that led to the Ford interception by Calvin Bundage. So you had two defensive players really stepping up that way. And then just everybody else stepping up and doing their job when they had to. Two quarterbacks played well. Tavion Thomas in his first game, outstanding. Complete effort for the Pirates here tonight. Yeah, they follow the script. You want a perfect indoor football league script? This was it. You got big plays from Bundage, who continues to be one of the top defenders in the league. You got your 
Backup quarterback factored in. You got Isaac Zico making a big catch. You've got special teams and Josh Gable acquitting himself well with a field goal. And you have a running game led by Thomas's 120 yards and that man too with two interceptions as he greets the young fans. So overall, a terrific performance by the Pirates as they head out on the road. So the Pirates go on the road for three straight. Their next game will be at Quad Cities on the 20th. That's an 8.05 game. See it on Caffeine TV and YouTube. The Pirates now 4-0 as they defeat the Iowa Barnstormers 54-29. Now for John Mita Perel, I'm Mick Mottingham. So long, everybody. Everyone's an athlete, whether you're 80 or 20, it doesn't matter. All the energy in here is devoted to them. When they come in here, the attention's on them. Actually seeing someone like walk out the door better than what they came in is just like the best thing. If you're functioning correctly, we're not only gonna get you back to where you were, my goal is to empower you and to get you, you know, better. You're gonna perform better than we were before. I'm super thankful to be out here riding my dirt bike again. They're the ones who go and tell their friends and they have the best stories to tell. Gate City Casino, totally transformed. Over 500 games, including old favorites and hot newcomers. Poker, our new state-of-the-art room awaits. Raving roulette, Spanish 21, or something fresh? We've got it all. It's your favorite hangout, now redefined. Gate City Casino Nashua, your winning adventure starts now. Ride the highway, ride the bus. Walk my house, look like I'm in place. Walk in the strip, she gon' make you bust. I'm flying, looking dummy. I'm about to get fried, I look like a mummy. I'm getting this cash, it's Monday to Sunday. I guess you won't talk if it ain't about the money. My boys in the trap and they jump like a bunny. Got pounds and f***s, it ain't nothing funny. I'm up on the side and I keep the coming. If I gotta reach up, I'ma keep the down. Where I slide in that coupe, boy, I keep the coming. We done went right this f*** all the way to the sun. Get deep in the pot, get deep like a plumber. Why would I keep her? I never went love her. I just went f***ing. Get to my brother, eat it for dinner, oh, eat it for supper. Why would you keep a little in trouble? Why would you keep a little in trouble? Ride the highway, ride the bus. 